Uh, let's get down to business and a very good afternoon and welcome to uh, Gippsland Live. It is the Alinta Energy Gippsland League. Round three clash today coming to you from the Mafra showgrounds. It is Mafra taking on Lee and Gatha and the Eagles are looking to open up their winning account for season 2024. It's certainly time for, to blood some young players, but they do get a couple of experienced players back into the side today. And a very good congratulations to Daniel O'Brien, who plays his 250th club game for the Eagles. A stalwart for the Eagles, he is certainly that. While they take on Lee and Gatha, certainly haven't played their best, best football, but they have got two early wins on the board and still plenty of players to come back into the side. But they are, in my opinion, clearly the team to beat. Great to have your company on this Saturday afternoon. It is a Gippsland Live, all thanks to Harvey Norman Electrical Gippsland. My name's Daryl Cooling. Joining me is uh, Timmy Sexton, or the Hall of Famer, as we know. He is my co-caller this afternoon. Timmy, good afternoon. Scott and uh, everyone, uh, pleasure to be here. And uh, good to be back on Gippsland Live for the first time this year in season 2024. So looking forward to a great game between uh, two sides. As we said, probably at uh, different stages as to where both teams are at. But uh, a cracking day for football. Nick Lucchino, special comment. Uh, up in the box with us, thanks to Carpet Country. How are you? Yeah, great, Scott, and looking forward to... Uh, it should be a great game this afternoon. The up-and-coming new breed of the Mafra Footy Club against the powerhouse of the Gippsland League over the last 10 years. And number one stats man in the business, Paul Carter, all thanks to Gippsland Azusa Ute. Good afternoon, Daryl and gentlemen. Yes, certainly looking forward to a fast-paced open game. The conditions are perfect for it. Scotty joins us down at ground level, of course, thanks to Carpet Country. Scotty, uh, great conditions. We're ready to go in this opening quarter. Perfect conditions. No breeze to speak of. Good calling, boys. Thank you very much. There he is. We'll cross to him throughout the afternoon down at ground level, all thanks to Carpet Country, helping dreams become a reality since 1981. And this first quarter is about to get underway. The ruckman for Mafra is the young fella in Tom Scott. Uh, still in year 12, I believe. So the youngster's up, again the, up against the experience of Big Benny Willis. And the umpire will get us underway to kickstart round three of the Inter Energy Gippsland League. And the first tap will go to Big Benny Willis. Try to run onto this one for the Eagles is Butcher. Overruns it, though. Left it behind. Marriott was there. Tried to tap it to a teammate. That teammate was Forrester. Had a little bit of a fresh airy. The pressure's good by the Eagles. Carr, that's uh, Alex. Kicks around his body. Ed's out this afternoon. So it's just left up to Alex Carr. The umpire's going to find the free kick going the Eagles' way. And it's going to go in the hands of Luke Dyer, who comes. is certainly a veteran. Played some big, big numbers for the Bansdale side. Inboard they go, the Eagles. On the far side of the ground out there is Ashton Wright. He's on his, uh, on the half-forward flank, kicks to the top of the 50. The target out there looks to be Gravener. Takes the mark for the Eagles. This is promising, although the inside kick was a little bit errant. Cade Maskell was there. Little chip kick. Found his teammate in Elga, and he finds the target at centre-half back, and that is Argento. He quickly plays on. The run-and-draw handball. Nash was there. He's going to get run down from behind. No. The tackle missed. Over the top to Hume. Ball in dispute over the shoulder. No, free kick. No, the umpire said let's play it on. Kaloran handles back to Carr and his kick goes to centre half forward. Goes inside 50, bouncing ball in, coming out and picking it up and taking it on. There was DeMarco. Was, he was stripped of the ball, wrapped up in the tackle there from Maverick. Gets a quick hand out. Fends off Willis, does DeMarco. His handball was knocked down again. Willis went back in there, got a handball. Lee and Gather are going to try and clear this out of their defensive 50. They'll come this way out through Algo and come to the near side and ends up in the Ooh. hands of Taylor Brill, who spilled it, was able to get back onto his feet. Umpire's going to say, it'll be my ball. Pretty unlucky there too, the Mafra side as well. They've really put the pressure on the first few minutes of this game already. Um, just really testing the limits of Lee and Gather's defence at the minute. Bedgwood takes the ruck, but it's Willis who gets the tap down. No one's able to take clear possession. Lee and Gather will clear it outside their 50, but it'll be coming straight back as Kaloran takes the mark just outside his attacking 50. Gives a quick handball off to Carr, but he had a defender right next to him. Swings around one, and his scrubby ball inside over the head of Bedgwood. Lands in their hands. They're coming out with the Lee and Gather. Takes a clearing kick back out towards the wing, but it's going to come back in there as young Tom Scott takes the mark. His kick tries to centre the ball. Wasn't a great kick, but ends up with the hands of... Uh, that was there, sorry, was right. He got the handball out to the far side there. Ends up with Felsberg on the left boot. Goes forward and ends up in the hands there of Anderson. Anderson will look to reload and put the ball inside 50. Slow play, chip kick, puts it up onto the head there and cutting across and taking the mark there for, uh, for Lee and Gather was Maskell. Maskell goes out wide, finds Hume. No score to speak of. Three minutes into the first quarter. Hume goes further out towards that uh, wing area. Argento has it 
for the Parrots. He wants someone to move for him. Hasn't got it. Comes inboard on the 45 to the wing. Forrester. Turns and looks. No one's on the mark, so he decides to take some ground. Goes to centre half forward. Open space for Hilberg. Goes up. Good spoil over the back from Lamborn. Comes to ground. Kaloran's there as well. Now Renoy receives the handball. He gets around two tacklers. The kick in board. Turnover. Jack Hume will mark it for the Parrots and quickly play on. Drive it inside 50. Ganane's the target. Goes up. Gets one over the shoulder. Umpire said all good. Inside. Top of the square it goes. Jensen Garneman can't mark. Lamborn's back there. Shins it. It does work, though, effectively. 15 metres advances. Outside to the top of the 50. Good pick up by Tallenbrill and then runs into an O'Brien tackle. Mafra's been good early. Very good early, Mafra. The young fellas have really stepped up a little bit too. The challenge will be for them now is to sustain it for, you know, 30 minutes uh, for this quarter. So Garnham will take the ruck duties inside forward 50 for the Parrots. Lays it out the back there for Van der Plyt. Shuffled it to no one in particular. Butcher just left it behind. Garnham goes one way. Handball's back to Marriott. Sidestep. Right foot shot on goal. Oh. Marriott with class. And he's the best player in the competition. He puts her through the first for the Parrots. Yeah, incredible balance uh, from Tom Marriott. He just found his feet. He had to go around a couple of uh, Mafra defenders to score that too, but... Liam Gaffey had to work really hard for that goal. They really did. Um, and credit to Mafra, uh, who, who were very relentless in regards to how they went about it. But in the end, it was class. They got the first one on the board for Gaffer. And that's on the Virtue Home scoreboard. The four-minute mark of the first quarter. Liam Gaffer, one goal straight, six to uh, Mafra. Yet to score. Mafra had three inside 50s there. Well defended by Liam Gaffer. Parrots went down and got the goal. Ball back in the middle of two. Ruckman go at it. Willis gets it down again. It lands in the hand of Van der Plyde. His handball go, ends up in the be hands of Benny Willis. He dumps it in long inside 50. Hilberg tried to get the mark, couldn't take it. Garnham ends up in the hands of Hilberg on his left boot. Kicks it forward, running onto it. Ooh. was Tried to be there was Hume. He couldn't get a hand on it. And they, uh, Felsberg will relieve the, uh, the pressure outside defensive 50. <laughs> Anderson looking up ahead. There's not much movement. He's going to have to just dump it down the line if he can. And he does. Heads towards on the far wing. And unable to take the mark there was Maskell. Quick hands out, comes out there and ends up into the coming back into the middle into Carr. Carr looked to play on. Oh. He was just shrug off Hanley with his strong hips there. Delivers the ball inside 50. One-on-one -on -one contest. Unable to get there. At the end of the ball there was Ross. He got the handball inside. Comes back out and ends up here with DeMarco. Centering ball. Good kick. And great mark taken in there by your mate. Boxer. Daniel Bedgegood. Daniel Bedgegood. I'll tell you what I do love about Mafra's game at the moment, and hopefully Scotty can clarify this in the band when we get to Scotty, is that they're prepared to play the middle of the corridor, like the ground. So they're really punishing the corridor and really stretching Liam Gatha. Scotty, thoughts at ground level? Yeah, definitely moving the ball quickly. And as Boxer said, they've come outside from defence and then gone straight back through the middle at every opportunity. Young kids really up and about. Bedgegood to try and respond quickly. He's about 35 out. Slight angle comes in, and he's going to hang that one out to the right for a minor score. First score to Mafra. It comes at the six-minute mark of the first quarter. The virtual home scoreboard one behind Mafra. Lean Gatha, one goal straight, six. For Cade Maskell, for the Parrots, we've travelled six and a half minutes into the first quarter. Thumps it Ooh. straight up in the middle of the ground. I like this style of play from uh, the sides that we're seeing. And Van der Plyte was able to get it out to Forrester. He's got the handle over the top. Decided to kick it in the end. Argento's got some space. Does it sit for him? It does now. The oh. Parrots stream forward. There's three options. One of them's Hume. He could handle to Hanley. He picks it up. Sidesteps Carr. The handle goes to Garnham. Garnham bananas it and misses everything. <laughs> Boxer. Unlike... Glenn Gather, very sloppy then as well. And uh, Hume had the opportunity to get the quick handball over originally before he stopped and propped. But Garner was a little bit laxy-daisy, or I'll call it laxy-daisy, on that kick. And it found uh, exactly what it deserved. What about the streaming run? Oh, it's huge. From the uh, Parrots, as soon as they went, they went really quickly. Anderson's in the back pocket here from Afra. He cuts back in board, as we said. They, here it is they're going to go oh. to. Oh, went through the hands. They came out there and got the... Clearing kick was dire. Up forward, Bedgegood went up. No free kick was there. But Scott, if he can bend down and pick it up, he's a chance to run inside 50. He is. Look at the goals. He didn't. Oh. He gave the handball away. Needed to square up and take a look at the goals there. Handball out. Comes out there to Butcher. He's centering ball. And uh, Taylor and Brill will take the relieving mark deep inside his defensive 50. Slows it up. Looks to the outer side again. They've had some space and success out there to have the Parrots. Argento's on his own. Been busy early. Beautiful chiselling kick to Garnham. Long way from home, though. Over the top to the big gum tree here at the showgrounds in Hilberg. 
Gets called to play on. The left foot kick will be turned over. It's gone straight down the throat of Archer Watt. Watt will chip it over the top. One of the youngsters to Felsberg. Here's another one. He's got some pace. He handballs forward to Bedgegood. No map for play inside forward 50. Liam Gathler got three defenders. He just had to stop and wait. And in the end, well, it probably worked out okay. His handball was smothered. And we've got a boundary throw. I, I think the disappointing part too, Scott, is that, that I think Mathra probably had the even amount of uh, inside 50s or even more. Uh, and they haven't made the most of it since they've got an inside 50. Correct. Box five to three, Mathra's way. Five-point margin favours Lean Gather. Ruckman go at it just outside Mathra's 50. No one takes it there, but Forrester was able to pick it up and take the kick out towards the wing. Coming through there and getting the hands on the ball there was right. Swinging around the corner, he gets it back again there and right, delivers the ball inside 50. Two on one contest though, unable to take the mark there as Maskell brings it to ground. Wrapped up straight away, but the ball will come out and uh, looking to get his hands on there is Dyer. He'll see the ball over about 25 metres out on the far side here from our commentary box. Heading into Mafra's, Mafra's end. We just ticked over nine minutes here into the first quarter. So like Felsberg and Renoy off half back for Mafra, what a run in half back line they've got at the moment there too. One thing I do like is they're, they're not afraid to go to young DeMarco as an option up forward as well. He presents pretty well. So if they keep sort of working on those and bringing these younger players into the game, they'll certainly get better as the season goes on. I think that confidence boost now too, Scott, is they've got it inside 50. This is the sixth time for the quarter. They've just got to capitalise while it's there for that confidence. Willis, in sense that they've got a, an advantage in the ruck area, they'll win this though, Mafra. Kaloran comes in board okay. but kicks it straight down the throat of Hume. At half back now for the Parrots, who just wants to slow things up. He's going to switch it to the near side. The run from Maskell's good. And he can take the mark and he can play on. He might handle over the top. Decides to kick him board to Turton. Turton's got a runner. That's Alga. Left foot kick is beautiful to Hilberg. Gives it back to Alga. Alga gets a half forward. Left foot inside 50. Doesn't quite get to Garnham. It gets out the back. Reed was back there for the Eagles. Under pressure. Got to handle away. No, the umpire said. Holding the ball. And the free kick will go Liam Gather's way. Talk about young kids and run across halfback. Well, both sides have got them. They've got them, and they've got one, though. Liam Gather's got one that's called Kate Maskell. Like, he's just incredible. Cooper he's Alga says g'day. And, and Cooper Alga, oh, hey, not Agla, <laughs> but Alga. Um, he definitely says g'day as well. He's running carry. His left foot's just deadly inside as well. So Jensen Garnham will have the shot on goal. Thank you very much to the MAFRA committee for just dropping off some lunch. We'll get to that at the quarter time break. Garnham comes in, looks to get the second for the Parrots, pushes it to the right side and might not make the distance in the end. It was kept in, now eventually goes over for a boundary throw-in. Second time he's had the ball in hand in front of goal. I know the first one was a little bit under pressure, but when the ball was under pressure, he just laid back on the kick. He just didn't actually have any real enthusiasm behind the kick, just kicked the absolute leather out of it. Ganane and Scott, Ganane at the back, clever, got his second tap, wasn't able to get anything out of it. Renoy, he'd look to get out of there, coming through, getting the handball in nice and tight air. Hanley, he's going to swing around over his left-hand shoulder. It's going to go wide and out of bounds on the full. And Mafra look to reload. Ticked over 11 minutes here, there's not a, uh, not a lot, what, he kicked it over his left-hand shoulder, right foot, left shoulder. Uh, beautifully called, Timmy, don't <laughs> question that at all. Five points of margin in favour of Lee and Gatha. Car's kick's going to be turned over, Brill, I got one high. And the turnover kick will result in Talon Brill having a shot. Did he look like he might have lowered the shoulder a little bit too to enhance the free kick, Scud? Um, Potentially. Looked like that from here, but anyway, you can only pay what you see, the ump, I would say. Scotty's got the Lee Gather supporters in front of him. Did he lower the shoulder, Scotty? No, definitely not. It was a legitimate high tackle, and don't you eat all those sandwiches on me, Scud. <laughs> <laughs> Talon Brill on a slightish angle, nothing to speak of pretty much. We'll have to kick at 45 metres, though. And the right foot kick, distance oh. not a problem, accuracy not a problem. And continuing his good form from last week, Talon Brill gets the second for the Parrots. And there's a difference. When you, when you actually kick with a little bit of enthusiasm and making sure the ball's going to carry, Talon Brill just showed us exactly how you should do it as well. So um, they've taken the opportunities when they go inside 50 at the moment, Lee and Gatha, even, albeit that... Uh, Maffer has really given him a little bit of pressure and, and shown a little bit more moving forward, but they just can't, can't get on the scoreboard. But Liam Gather can. Virtue Home scoreboard has Liam Gather with an 11-point lead, 12 minutes into the first quarter. The Parrots two goals straight, 12. Maffer one behind, one point. Ball's come back into the middle here. Will be Scott going up into the ruck work. Benny Willis has gone to the bench, so the young fella will go up there against Kyle Brown. Got the tap down. 
Swing tackle, and the umpire will play that there in the sling tackle. So it'll be Turton that'll get the free kick here back into the middle. We had a couple of those last week, the sling tackles, and a couple of players did come off second best too, so it's good to see the umpires actually yep. taking control of that early. Getting rid of them. Short kick to Van der Plot. He's going to go long, deep inside their forward 50. Marriott's the, the one-on-one -on -one contest. Comes out the back. Hanley's going to rove onto it, and he's going to go in and kick Liam Gass's third. And this is what we said pre-game, how deadly... Lee and Gather are running forward of the ball once the player's got the ball in hand. Another perfect example of it then. So Maffrey were lucky the first time when they were running forward of the ball that they didn't get a goal out of it, but they couldn't stop Hanley. Good contest there by Garnham, and a great running goal in there by Hanley. Taking Lee and Gather to a 17-point lead on the Virtue Home scoreboard. 13-minute mark first quarter. Lee and Gather three goals straight, 18. Maffra one behind, one point. Let's quickly go around the grounds. Thanks to Harvey Norman Furniture, Gippsland in the AFL. This is great, great reading. <laughs> um, <and laughs> <laughs> we're only 15 minutes into the second quarter, and it's 8-3-51 Port Adelaide to Collingwood, 3-6-24. All right. In the ruck, Brown and the two youngsters. Scott got high, though, for Maffra. Tapped it down, coming off the line. On that occasion was Watt. And quickly got tackled. The umpire said, let's do this again. I do like the matchups too. So Reed's taken Garnham. Uh, Lamborn goes to Hilberg. So two good matchups down forward. Scott again. No one really tapped this one out, but his second tap was okay. Went towards Butcher. Vanderplight tried to crash through and have an impact on the play. Couldn't do so. We're going to do this for a third time. Big moments for them all. Bowling club. When we get a chance to Scotty, if Scotty's listening in, can you find out why all the coaches at Leon Gathers got an ear? Are they listening to the radio um, while they're coaching as well? Uh, we'll work on that one. We'll get Scotty uh, moving around at ground level. And meanwhile, and Jack Hume has a little chip kick to Ganane. And Ganane will right foot kick it into the middle of the ground, looking for Turton. Turn it over. Jet Clorant who takes the mark in the middle, has been in good form, gives it to Carr, inboard further to the runner on this occasion. This looks to be Anderson. Out wide is O'Brien. Handball just had to get there a little bit quicker. O'Brien threw it to himself in the end. And the umpire said holding the ball. And at half back, Borschman gave it to Maskell, who kicks it to half forward. Getting underneath that on that occasion was uh, down there for... Argento for Liam Gath, a little squit uh, handball out to Marriott, inboard to Turton, Carr's there as well, trying to come and help on the other occasion, on that occasion was Anderson, ball still in dispute, inside forward 50 though for the Parrots, Hanley goes to ground, holding the footy. She's a quick with a whistle too, the umpires with holding the ball, but albeit they're getting the game moving as well. Butcher, he's kick over the top. Coming through the middle there, and as you said, Boxer, they're going to try and attack the middle there. On this occasion, though, unable to take the, the kick there, and the hand in the mark was... Mate, taking the mark there was Nash. He comes out wide to Hume on true centre wing in front of the interchange gates. He'll take back in on the 45. Based on the AFL, that was not 15 per play on. He gets the handball back. Hume running through the middle and finds Marriott at the top of the 50. He's going to look to turn and go. He does. Kicks it in, and the man being there, unmarked, is Borschman. And he'll take the kick from about 45 out. You know, it's incredible. I, I talk about this forward run by Liam Gather, and they are deadly at running forward. Here we go. Maskell gets the handball off Borschman. His kick's not great. And it goes wide. Gunham couldn't mark, and it's a behind to Liam Gather. But that running forward from Liam Gather is what we spoke about. They were deadly on that. Maskell was inside 50. Borschman was inside 50 because they run forward and they run hard. A three-goal lead to Lee and Gatha, virtual home scoreboard uh, at the 16.5-minute mark first quarter. Scotty at ground level for us for Carpet Country. Yeah, Lee and Gatha boys have got an internal uh, audio system, so they're talking to the coach on the bench and they're just sitting away just to give him a bit of space. So, yeah, Boxer, they're not listening to you. I've okay. <laughs> uh, got another one for you too, number 51 uh, out there for Lee and Gatha. Don't have it on our team sheet. If you can hunt that for us as well, that would be fantastic, Scotty. As the ball gets uh, transferred out towards halfback flank, they've got some runners to the Eagles. Reed handles over the top. Felsberg's going to get on the end of this. Gives it back to Reed, and he's under pressure. Leading out the numbers now. Willis just shoves <laughs> an opponent out the way. Argento, and now Marriott crashes through one. That's holding the footy. As Kaloran wins a free kick. He's been great today, Kaloran, early. Him and Carr, probably their best for Maffer at the minute. Gets it out wide now to a runner in Ashton White. That's right. And now O'Brien, half-back flank, has to carry it. He's got Butcher presenting if he can get it to him. Over the top as well, there is a runner. And it's Gravener and Butcher that eventually oh, kicks hands. the bench good. We'll give it back to Butcher. Right foot kick, open spot. Just going to find the target. He had two to pick from. And the one that wins out for Lee and Gatha, that's Cooper Elgar. Gets it over to Mason McGannon. 
McGannon takes the bounce and goes out onto the far wing looking for there. Coming out there is, is Garnham, but he couldn't take couldn't get the hands on it. Maffer have got the three players, but he's done well to get back on top of it. Garnham and the umpire will come in and we'll have a ball up. Uh, Jet Kalor and eight disposals at this stage. Alex Carr, six, both playing very well for Maffer. McRae in number 51, Scud. Thank you very much. The young McRae who comes into the side, Trent McRae. So for those out there that are listening, he did have number 32 listed, but he will be now in the 51. Willis got the ruck tap down. Quick kick forward, ends up in the hands there of Argento, and he's wrapped up straight away. Lee and Gatha side here of the centre square. We've just ticked over 18 and a half minutes into the first quarter, and it's a Parrots leading by three goals. Two Ruckman go at it again. Young Scott got the tap down there. Quick kick out from Kaloran. Goes up into a one-on-one -on -one contest. Hume, he tried again. Couldn't get his hands on it there. Hanley came out with a handball to Alga. He was wrapped up straight away. And we'll have a ball up here in the centre square. Margin sits at 18 points. Lee Gather's favour. 19 minute marks of this first quarter for Virtue Homes. Three unique display homes now on display at Broadway Boulevard in Taralga. No one can really win it from this contest, although Marriott stood up in it, gave it to Willis. He tried to get it to Turton. Eventually at ground level, Flixer somehow gets a handle out to Hume. And all of a sudden, Lee and Gatha in heavy traffic are going to clear this out. Borschman gives it to Alga. He's been busy. Little chip kick is nice to Forrester. And that's what the good sides do. It bobbles around. No one's really in control. And then all of a sudden, Lee and Gatha through a chain of handballs, are able to win it, clear it, and now they get it inside forward 50. And Garnham's got a good sit. Reid was over the back. Couldn't complete the mark. His second effort was OK. Marriott tried to tap it to himself as well. Butcher decides to kick it off the ground. Renoy now gathers it. Kicks around his body. And Brown drops the mark, though. Elga's there to help. Strong tackle from Watt. And we'll have a ball up right in front of us here in the beautiful media box that Mafra have prepared for us. What an incredible store what Reid is for Mafra. Yep. You know, for years and years and years, he doesn't get beat one-on-one -on -one very often. Willis tapped it down. We're going to have another secondary ball up. Uh, the two lock horns, Sam Robbins and Marriott. Here's Tim Sexton on TRFM. This is Gippsland Live. Big Randy Willis, he got the tap down now. Renoy got the handball out. Forrest is going to be the first one to it. He couldn't. Taylor Brill goes through one, goes through two, was able to stand up in the tackle, got the handball out to Vanderplight, and now they're off again. Quick chip inside. Ends up with Argento. He went Ooh. to go, and he was. He's called to play on. He now gets around Felsberg from 55, sends it forward. Up there was one, two. No one was able to take the grab there for Lee and Gatha. Row back over the top of it. Quick kick out. Looking to rush the ball through was Reed, and eventually it's gone through for a rush behind. 19-point lead to Lee and Gather. 3 2 20 on the virtual home scoreboard. Leading Mafra one behind. Argento's him. big tool last week was his assists inside 50. He was deadly, his pace, and he uses the ball beautifully. So Fel Carr got it Sorry. to Felsberg in the defensive back pocket. Felsberg chips over the top, finds a teammate in right. He goes another 15 only just to Robbins. The run from Felsberg off halfback was good. Right foot kick to the wing area. This is where they've been breaking down a little bit, and again... The mark on this occasion by Mitch Bent Valzen, boxer. Mitch. Takes the mark. <laughs> Goes in board to Forrester. He's got Ganane if he wants to square it. Decides to go inside 50. Hilberg's the target. Reed with a big spall. Ganane got front and square, left it behind. Head over that one on that occasion. Coming the other way was Tudor. Somehow get the handball out to a teammate. Here's Carr. Right foot delivery towards half forward. DeMarco's the target. Goes through his legs. Back there is Nash, working hard, wins it. Inboard handball to Forrester, and he'll relieve the pressure to Brill. Brill, true centre wing here on the uh, commentary side. He <laughs> tries to change the angle, and he does. Kicks it to the far oh. side. Unable to take the mark there was Hume. Renoy's at it. He loses his feet. Hume kept his feet. One tap, two taps. Looks for Marriott. He can't get there, but Argento was waiting for the handball out. No one's there. Hume's still going at it. It's been going for about 60 metres. The Great effort there by Hume. Felsberg picked it up and he's wrapped up in it. And this is where the defensive side of the Mafra game gets fallen down is because they press so highly in Gatha, they really force the error when the ball gets exited out of their D50. So that's something they've got to look at when they come out. Scott got the tap down. Wrapped up and we're going to have a secondary ball up. No, we're not. Lee and Gather again get out of it. Scott came through, but Forrester just did a 360. Kicked the ball inside. Ganane, he couldn't take the mark. Clearing for outside defensive 50 will be Anderson for Mafra. Looking to run onto it. Bedgegood. Great collect. He just dribbles it around on his right foot. He's looking for the boundary line. Yep. Could be 
And oh, if you're in the AFL, that would that be was done. sufficient intent, <laughs> I would have thought, all day. But uh, we'll pay it as a boundary throw in on the far, uh, far side. So Matt for now thrown Anderson back as a spare in the middle of the ground, which really exposes him a little bit too, because this is what Liam Gather want. They want to free up. They'll probably free up Cade Maskell off the half back. Spot on. And they'll damage him all the way through. 23 minutes gone. First quarter for Virtue Homes. 19 points is the margin. Nicely done at ground level there by Forrester. Over the top there to Van der Plot. Chiseling kick to Argento just at his toes. Trying to swoop on that one was Kaloran. Gives it inboard handball. Now they turn it over again. Although good pressure by O'Brien to lock this one up. How good are Lean Gatha in these little situations when the contest is on just to somehow get the handball out and they just somehow get out of that congestion They love area. pushing the ball back, Scud. Spot on too from you. Uh, they love pushing it back, get the open runner and get the ball moving. Marriott flicked it out towards the run of Argento, went to ground. Van der Plyte was there, inboard handball back to Marriott. He popped up, he gave it to Forrester and Forrester delivered beautifully oh. with his left foot to Hilberg. Does not get much better than that from a stoppage. I was going to mention too, I wonder if we're taking Forrester's numbers this, uh, this afternoon, but he has been on song. Like every time the ball's uh, on, the, on the overlap, he's the one they link up with straight away with that damage and left foot. There's a couple of halfback flankers they've been linking up with. He's one of them. Hilberg's left foot kick directly in front. Does not miss. Beautiful kick. And Lee and Gather have got four in the opening quarter. And the margin's out to 25 early. Yeah, the scoreboard's not really helping Mafra's plight here as well. I think if Mafra could have got that goal, they would have been happy with the 3-1 coming close into quarter time. But again, the class of Lee and Gather, the way they use the ball, open space for Hilberg to run into, and the kick was just as good. And it's a 25-point uh, lead to Lee and Gather on the Virtue Home scoreboard. 4-2-26 to Mafra, one behind one point. 24 just and a half minutes played. Just keep an eye on Jack Ganane, boys. He's training has been out to him twice and he's now taken himself deep into the forward 50. Right hand injury, I suspect. All right. Thank you very much for Scotty down at ground level. All thanks to Carpet Country this afternoon. Helping dreams become a reality since 1981. Trying to win this out the middle of the ground was Robbins. Gets it to the outer side. Your teammate in Will Ross. The runner half back. I like this fella. Felsberg with a neat kick to the Ruckman. And he gives it to Scott, who gives it back to Felsberg, who ran on. Inside 50 kicks. Nice. And neat. Does it find him? It does. It's uh, Sam Robbins. On the outer side of the ground, this felsberg has got some pace. He's got some he's attack. Good. Very good. And I like him. He's been one of the better performers for Gippsland, Izuzu, Ute in the first quarter for the Eagles. As Robbins comes in, leans back on it to the teeth of the square. And Maskell takes the uncontested mark for the Parrots and gets it to Borschman. Borschman, he tries to clear the uh, defensive 50. But coming through there was Renoy. He's going to run onto it and wrap Borschman up straight away in a strong tackle. And that's good pressure there by Cave Renoy to keep the ball deep inside their 50. And Maffer will be wanting to get that score before, uh, before quarter time. Ruckman will go at it. Big Benny Willis stands, gets a tap down. No, he just taps it to himself, <laughs> collects it, and then delivers the ball outside defensive 50. Wrapped up in the tackle there was good work there coming from a stables it was from Mafra. Kicking the ball inside 50 was Butcher. And coming through and taking the strong, uncontested mark again was Maskell. And they go again, the Parrots. Here they go. Straight through Van der Plyte. He gets the handball off and ends up there coming through from Little John. Taylor Brill takes the mark on the far side. He's looking to come back inboard and then he decides to stay outside there into Hume. Jack Hume, a little bit stagnant. He's going to come back, centres the ball, and it'll end up in the hands here of Cooper Elga. He's going to come back out to this side. Ends up Maskell. He's got another one out this way if he wants to. He doesn't. He goes a little bit straighter and ends up with Forrester. Ooh. Forrester. He's going to... There goes Big their barrel. quarter time siren. What do you reckon, Boxer? He's going to be about 65 out when he's going to have to have his kick. He's a beautiful kick. He, he comes to our contender for... And if he gets his goal, this will be the winner Absolutely. of the Zambrero what goal of the day by a country mile. Go the top, son. Go the top. Go the top. As he comes in, and Forrester, he is. He is, he's setting up to go to the top. This will be good. On the left foot, from about 60 out, he'll be kicking it from inside the centre square. Oh, no. He <laughs> hasn't got halfway near it, and that's going to be quarter time here at the Mafra Showgrounds with the, uh, with the Parrots well and truly in control. 4-2, 26, leading Mafra one behind. It's a 25-point margin at quarter time. It is Gippsland Live on TRFM, across Gippsland and the Valley, and it's all thanks to Harvey Norman, Electrical Gippsland.
Uh, in the Gippsland League, one thaggy, three, four, 22. They lead more with three straight, 18. Murray, two, four, 16. They lead sale just the three points. So uh, Murray have got off to a great start there. In the Mid-Gippsland Football League, all tied down at uh, MDU and Tarwin, 19 apiece. Newborough, one, two, eight. Yanar, five, four, 34. Thorpedale, three, three, 21. Ballara, five, three, 33. Tura, five straight, 30. Hillen, three, three, 21. And more or less, 5 6 36 at Stony Creek, just the four points. North Gippy, uh, not too bad, 50% strike rate at the moment. Uh, Woodside in the match of the day versus Sale City. Woodside, 5 2 37, Sale City, 1 1 7. Glengarry, 3 1 19, Hayfield, 6 3 39. And Cower, 3 8, sorry, 3 straight 18. They trail Yellow North, 3 5 23. All right, second quarter about to get underway. As we said here, it is Lee and Gather leading by 25 points, and it'll be Willis and Scott to do the ruck duties. And the umpire gets underway. Scott with the Mafra Eagles taps it down, but picking that off was uh, Van Der Plight to Marriott out to the run out wide. It looked to be Bent Valzen inside 50 to Hilberg direction, gathered it, handled straight to the opponent though. Coming the other direction there was Tudor. They're in a bit of trouble, kick around the body. A uh, high kick in the end from Trent McRae right to the goal line. Can the Parrots get an early one? Ball still in dispute. Head over the football. They want to rush this one through to the Eagles. And eventually, it was helped over the line by Ashton Wright. And it's a minor score to open up this second quarter for uh, Mowey Racing Club. It's 4-3-27. Lee Gather, one behind, one point, Mafra. So Carr receives the kick in. Wants to come towards the boundary line. He's got Felsberg. Does he keep it in the field of play? Well, he's marked. He couldn't complete it. And Tallenbrill will slap it and put it over for a boundary throw in right in front of the corporate boxes here at the Eagles Nest. And of course, both of them are full. It's great to see a pass player back entertaining Sam Fleming's back with it, entertaining some guests down from Melbourne. I'm sure they're enjoying their day here in Mafra. As trying to win this one is Caloran. Oh, and then lost the footy and then gave away the free kick. Little John for the Parrots has it. Forward to centre for the Lee and Gather side, they go short towards Hume. Hume. Hume, he plays on quickly, he delivers the ball inside 50. Out on the lead there is Garnham, and he takes a strong mark. He's going to look to the centre, I would have thought. It's a tough pocket there. He's about 45 out. He's called to play on, and he does. He sets it up to the top of the square. One-on-one -on -one contest coming through there, taking the mark. Marriott's and no. no, hasn't been paid by the umpire. He had two grabs, three grabs at it. The umpire will ball it up right at the top of the square here for the Parrots. Going up, doing the ruck work there. Coming through, Ganane. He comes flying through off the pack and puts it through for a goal for the first one of the quarter. And they just like to move hard forward, especially in a stoppage situation as well. They get numbers behind the ball. When you've got a bull like Tom Mary who can protect the goal side, and you've got Ganane that comes off the other side of it uh, of the play, uh, you're never going to stop it. And once the ball comes to delivery like that, uh, they really make you pay. Might be an early contender for the Zambrero goal there, boys. 5-3, um, 33, the Lee and Gutter score on the Murray Racing Club scoreboard. Maffer one behind, one point. Talk about a tale of two ends. Uh, there's only two minutes to go in the AFL, so thanks to Harvey Norman Gippsland. The boys now... A 9-9-63, nine, nine, uh, Port Adelaide's just put the queue in the rack. What? They're still an 8-3-51. Wow. So it's a really big comeback in the last 10 minutes. Ever since you gave that yeah. update. <laughs> and I could have done that because Marty's down there and I just didn't think she could hear it. <laughs> anyway, so it's fine. Margin at 32 here, back to the middle. Scott taps it down, trying to crash through his car. Forward, uh, backwards handle it was by Butcher to his teammate in Caloran. He uh, goes backwards to Renoy. Can they find a target by foot? No. Butcher left it behind. Vanderplight there for the Parrots. Over the shoulder handball from what was okay. Butcher, now they get it inside forward 50. Can the leading target? They do. That's better play. DeMarco takes the mark. Directly in front, 40 metres out. We'll have to kick at 45. I've liked his game today, DeMarco. He just really presents very well. He protected the uh, drop zone then too for the mark. Now, did uh, the great man Adrian Burgill wear 44 here at Mafra? 77. Oh, it's close. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was a double-figured number. <laughs> but thanks for that, Paul. So you could have just said, yeah, but I'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. But DeMarco. Yeah, no, hang on. The similarity, and he did wear a long sleeve. He DeMarco, did. in the famous number 44, just been compared to the Mafra great of Adrian Bergil. Oh, oh. And he's kicked a barrel upside down, drop punt out of bounds on the full miss by 15 Let's metres. Let's continue on with the, uh, the similarities. Bergil wore a long sleeve. Yes. 
He kicked left foot. Yes. But he didn't kick like that. No. <laughs> no, I reckon occasionally he might have. No, not very often. DeMarco, hey, I'm sure he'll uh, have another chance for his shot on goal. He's a good young kid coming through. Cade Maskell will bring the ball in. He's called to play on. And Borschman, he's... He wasn't able to take the mark. Kept it inside. Forward 50 there from Afra Coming through. Bedge good. He's going to stand there and wait and try and get their hands on it. It's bouncing oh. around. That's over the shoulder. And the umpire has seen it coming from behind. And a free kick will come out there to our man Argento, who was all over it there in the first quarter. He switches the play to go to the other side through Ben Svalzen. Boxer. Oh, no, that was all right. You, hey. put, an, you put an S in there. That was <laughs> no, a Z. Brill. He got there. He'll get the free kick as well. Need to go lower in these tackles here to the Eagles. Comes back in and into the safe hands of Askell. Comes back inside to Alga. True centre half back. He gives the handball off. Maskell on his left foot. He'll come out wide here and ends up with Tom Marriott. Go wide. He's looking to go back inside on the 45. Call for it. Alga goes over the top of his head. Ends up in the hands there of Ned Hanley. How good's your half back one when you can go Alga? You know, Maskell, Maskell, Alga, the ball comes out. Hanley chips it over the top. They're holding on to the football nicely. Argento, now he's got Alga in the middle. A beautiful kick. Alga in stride. 55 metres out to the open forward line. Easy as you like. And it's down inside there. Is it Bent Velden? It might be McGannon, actually. Yeah, it's McGannon. So Mason McGannon has taken the mark all on his own. That was beautiful build-up by the Parrots. When you move the ball that quick, you catch defenders flat-footed in exactly what um, Liam Gaffer did. They caught Maffron Nappen, and uh, a big chance here for McGannon. So Mason McGannon from 45, slightish angle, right foot on its way, umpire moves slightly, and says it's missed. Didn't move a great deal, the uh, goal umpire, but enough. That's a minor score, Paul. A 33-point lead to Leon Gather. A six-minute mark, second quarter. Murray Racing Club scoreboard. Scud, the goal umpire was that close to the goalpost. He couldn't move any further across, <laughs> so he was stuck. OK. Bringing the ball back in there. Will be Lamborn. He's into the fast... Chip kick into the far pocket there. Ends up with Carr. He's going to come back to Lamborn. They're going to switch sides and come back out here to the grandstand side. It's got to be good. Looking to, for Reed. He was good, but wasn't able to take the mark. He's wrapped up straight away. Ball comes out into the hands there of Ross. Gets a handball over there to Felsberg. And now Watt. Watt gets a quick handball out. The quick hands here by the young guys, but Marriott comes through like a bull that he is. And uh, expertly just takes the ball over the boundary line here between the two interchange gates here at the Mafra Showgrounds. Perfectly said. Expertly like too. Now this is where the experience of Lee and Gaffer, they're going to start getting on top of these young fellas at the minute. They're forcing the error. Seven minutes, second quarter for the Murray Racing Club. 33 points the margin. Head over there was Borschman. Good, solid work there by Lockie Allman. Marriott tried to stand up. Cloran did well. To what? Tried to raise the shoulder. Got wrapped up immediately. No prior opportunity. As we've got a ball up. Just in front of Scotty down at ground level. Intensity picking up Scotty down at ground level. Mapra yeah, yeah. doing oh. everything they can, but just need to capitalise. Hot footy down here. Every time Mapra get it, they just do everything under pressure. So Kaloran now has it. Goes to half forward. Maskell has the sit and has two bites at it and will be awarded the mark. So Maskell at half back. Good user of the footy. In they go. Towards McGannon. He's at the uh, half back line. He's got a runner back to Maskell. The other handball out wide was to Nash, who gives it to Maskell eventually. And they chip it over the top, looking for Brill. It'll be downfield. Bedgegood didn't meet it. Helped him up. Brill will get the free kick. They'll chip it on and play it quickly to Little John. And Little John goes in wide, in five forward. 50 to Garnham. And the strength on Reed. And in a blink of an eye, again, they've got another shot on goal. The transition from That's half transition. back is just superior. At I, the just, I sort of sit here and wonder how opposition coaches go with Cade Maskell. Like... Every game we, do, we manage to call uh, Liam Gaffer, he seems to find that space. I know Mafra's throwing a player behind the ball, but it just opens the gates up for Liam Gaffer well, to do that. Eight minutes into the second quarter, 15 kicks and seven marks, Maskell. Unreal. The Gippsland Azusa Ute, as Garnham comes in, slight angle, distance no problem. The post is the issue. Minor score. 5-5, five, five, 35, Liam Gaffer on the Murray Racing Club scoreboard, leading Mafra one behind one point, coming up to the nine-minute mark of the second quarter. Sure why, I'm sorry, mate. Become a member today, save on meals, drinks, race day entry at the Maui Racing Club. Just don't understand why he's actually been a little bit lackadaisy with his kicking today. He's got the opportunity here, uh, and he's just poked at that one again and uh, found the goalpost. K 
Carr brings the ball back in. He goes on the far side up. Well, I was Maskell wasn't able to bring anything to ground, but they're out here kicking the ball forward. Baffra, they're in here. If they could, ball bounces nicely. Two on one. No one's able to pick it up, but it is Dyer. Dyer swings around on his right boot, bouncing. Bouncing is going to co go across the face of goal and rush through. There was by Jack Hume for a minor score. You know your day's not going really well when the ball's actually in your favour. Uh -oh, it was two against one. I'm not sure. I'm not understanding the umpires calling these guys back from the uh, the kick-ins. That's the third time that's happened, and they're waiting for the flag to be waved. But I thought we got rid of that rule a little while ago, Timmy. I thought we did too. It's only after the it's just as long as they indicate. once it's scored. Yeah. So anyway, Van der Plyte, he got it back to Hume, and they're outside their defensive fifty. Chiseling ball, but it was cut off there by Baffer's best by a long way in Kaloran. He goes back inside and ends up there in the hands there of Dyer. He's about 55 out. There's plenty of Lee and Gather back and not enough Mafra. He comes out wide to the pocket. Bedgegood's got the sit here if he can get it. Doesn't. His first one to it at the ground though. Swings round. Gets the handball through. But Lee and Gather through Vanderplight. Get the handball out. Brill. And Brill will take the mark. Lee and Gather just do it through numbers. They don't just do it. They've got class but they've got numbers. They're happy to support each other coming out of the defensive 50. McRae all by himself. Looks to go back in board. Gee, and do he this. does. He's got nothing there. Cool. Vanderplight to Brill. He'll run. And run, and look, Marius pushing towards the 50. If Brill can get a handball off, he does to Hanley. He was under pressure, though. But again, they've just got numbers there. Forrester from 50 on the left boot. Bouncing. Well, no, man. getting back and getting his hands on there was right. And he's forced through for a minor score. Lee and Gatham now 5, 6, 36 on the Murray Racing Cup scoreboard. Mafra, two behind his two points. 11 minutes played, second quarter. These young kids of Mafra, I know that the scoreboard says a 34-point margin, but these young kids of Mafra, yeah. I tell you what, they, they've got something. Yep. And if they can keep them together, if what's going to come through, the fourths and the thirds are both uh, very good at the moment. But this is good experience for them. They're holding strong at the moment. Elga, though, at half forward. Gives it to Brill. Brill will put it back inside forward 50 for Lee Gatha. Garnham will go back. Couldn't complete the mark. Umpire said play on. Here's one of them. Fellsberg gives it to Kaloran and another one. And they release the outlet kick. They've got Cade Renoy outside 50. He can mark. Draw the handball to a runner. And that runner drives his foot into it. He gets it towards half forward. Free kick will go in the way of Mafra. Stables will be the one that's on the end of it, goes towards Bedge, good, but they're lining up in front of him, and Borschman takes the mark, he wants to move it quickly to Elga, and now they've got numbers in the middle, can Butcher get back and cause the Argento fumble, he does, O'Brien swoops on it, gives it to Scott, who drives it to half forward. Scott drives it to half forward, one-on-one -on -one contest, no one was able to get a clear mark out of that one, and the umpire will come in, and we'll have a ball up. And you hit the nail on the head there, it's too, Scott, it's a great learning opportunity for the Mafra side too, but... It was that defensive run from the midfield of Lee and Gather that cut that off because Bedgegood was on his own and their work rate actually accounted him to a stoppage. Scott was able to get the tap down there coming through, getting his handball out was Robbins, but it's cut off there again through Matt, th through the Parrots and they're going to go out on the far side there through Argento, who's been everywhere. He's looking for someone. He wants to go inboard. He's going to go outboard again and Hanley will take the mark. True centre wing. He comes inboard though, looking for... And finding, Ooh. not able to find there was Forrester. Getting the hands on there, though, was Ross. His handball out ends up coming through to Robbins. Robbins with the quick hands to Carr. And he goes out onto the far wing, looking for and finding Renoy. He's got a runner over the top if he can get to him. And he does there in O'Brien. Here we go. O'Brien back to Renoy. Here's the kick, and it does. He finds Bedgegood. 55 out. Swings around. On, went to go on his left. And then the handball was cut off there, coming through <laughs> by Lee and Gather. Got the handball there, though, was DeMarco. He was able to pick it up. Quick kick inside, and uh, the umpires are going to come in here and have a ball up. 50 metres out from the Mafra goal. Everything's just hard here for the Eagles at the moment. Scotty down at ground level. You've got a bit of company down there from the uh, successful <laughs> reserves, boys. Yeah, found a few mates, Scuds, but they're not sharing their chips. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they will. <laughs> There's no sandwiches left either, either mate. <laughs> Ty Hall next to him, not sharing his chips with our man at ground level. Meanwhile, we're going to have a shot on goal for Maffrey in Archer Watt. Renoy had his name written all over the Zambrero goal of the day. If he had that overlap handball go well by Bedge, good, and it did it. And uh, that's where I'll play the selfish card because I had him picked to do that. So Archer Watt, a recruit out of Bansdale, come down looking for some senior experience, and he gets just that with the Eagles. He's a hard at it player, will certainly develop well from 48 metres, puts it on its way. 
And he needs a bit more developing on these shots on goal. That one misses everything. Out of bounds on the full. Paul, what are the inside 50s? It would be triple to triple to zero, wouldn't it? Uh, not this quarter. Six to Lee Gather, four to Mafra. Okay. <laughs> it seems a little bit more offside than that. 34 uh, points the margin. All thanks to the Moe Racing Club in this second quarter. We've travelled 14 and a half minutes. It's Felsen. He got the kick to McGannon and he came back in board and find Van der Plyte. He comes through to Hanley. Left, then right. McGannon, he takes the mark here. They're still at half-back flank. They just are so methodical about how they move the ball. Van der Plyte, he comes in and finds the open player there in Alga. He's going to look to go. Swings out onto his left boot. Out wide there. And finds it out there with Little John. Chip over the top. Hume, he works hard. He was in the deep 50 just before. He now plays on quickly. Now he goes inside 50. One, two up. And taking the strong mark. contested mark there. At the back there was Reed. Great mark there. An experienced defender coming through and stopping the Parrots' movement. He goes out wide and looking for and finds Felsberg. This kid is good. Yep. Like Been good. It. He's going to swing around onto his left boot. And his pink boots that he's got goes over the top. And that ends up there in the hands there of Ross. They've been able to move the ball to true centre wing here with a quick chip kick, but nothing there coming through Renoy. He was, did well, though. Got second attempt. Got his handball over the top to no one in particular. Found space. Ends up with DeMarco. He comes back in board and getting the handball coming back through. And uh, Anna will see there from the Eagles, but quick kick inside 50. One-on-one -on -one contest. Bedgegood's on the lead. But good closing speed there came there from Ben Felsen. And now the Parrots will take the relieving kick and come out here to this side through Elga. McRae is his option out wide. He can gather it on the run. Has a bounce in front of the coaching staff. His right foot kick. It's going to be perfect. Not quite. Borschman had it. Felsberg running down, holding the footy. I tell you what, I want to know if this uh, Felsberg is under 18 still or if he's as progressed into open age football. But either way, I'm coaching the Gippsland Interleague under 18 side this year. Oh, super just coach. keeping my eye on a couple of these youngsters from Mafra. I think Felsberg might be just outside of my range, I think. Just had a change of footy, Scott. Have we? All right. One's not right. So Felsberg squared it out to Lamborn. He went further afield out wide to Ross. They've transferred the footy from one side to the other. Have they got some open space? Over the top they go. Nicely done. It's in the hands of Wright. He can chip it further afield. He's got a target there in stables. Can't complete the mark. Now Lee and Gather get some numbers. Van der Plyke gets it to Little John. They go to Lindsay. Back to Little John. And he kicks it backwards to Maskell. Why wouldn't you? And Maskell will hold things up. Not sure he's happy with the new footy, to be honest. He went inboard. They've done this all afternoon. They take the risk and the reward is high. They get it inboard to Borschman. Numbers everywhere. Argento at centre half forward. Handball's off to Turton. Turton runs himself into a little bit of trouble. No one tackles him. He lost the footy. He picked it back up. Still got a handball away. The ball's at their centre half forward. Argento has his head over it and the umpire now will ball it up. Scott, I reckon that the reason why they changed the ball was because of Maskell. Okay. He's kicking the absolute <laughs> leather off it. <laughs> so that's why uh, they've changed the ball. 34 points a margin. 17-minute mark of the second quarter. No one's able to get anything out of that ruck contest. And we'll have another ball up here, 55 metres out. From Two weeks in a row now that we've seen a little bit of a stranglehold on Lane Gathier in a second quarter uh, where they've been held goalless. We'll go to Scotty the kicks the ball inside. But the mark there was Garnham. He wasn't able to take anything out of that. Coming out there, and I think that's into the hands again of that man, Felsberg. On the right, wasn't his great kick. Allman, he was able to pick it up at oh. the feet, but it went into the hands of Hume. He takes on one. Allman did well to follow back up there with his tackle. Try and get the handball out. He does to Felsberg, to Reed, back to Felsberg. On the left oh. boot, comes in board Good and kick. looking for and trying to find Robbins, and he does find him. He comes out left and ends up in the hands of Butcher. There's no one in front of him. He's got to play, around, play on is the call. He goes back to Robbins. There's still no one in front. Here's Kaloran. He goes out wide and finds coming in board. Uh, was Hamble got in the way there, was looking for Bedgegood, wasn't able to get it. And they'll take the clearing kick out through Little John. Looking for Forrester. He followed it up again. He comes off the ground and ends up there and picking the ball up is Turton as he takes it over the boundary line. Scotty at ground level. Yeah, that's the original footy back, Scud. What happened was one got kicked through the big sticks earlier and they couldn't get it, so they replaced it. Someone's gone and got the original prune back and we're back to the original ball. Wow, you'd never see that at country football. If the ball goes over the fence, it's usually gone. one of the youngsters from Maffa would have taken that and put it down the main street. I would, have had, an an I would have had an eBay in 30 seconds. <laughs> now look at you, Boxer and Scotty thinking alike. Of course you do. Ball back into the uh, field of play. Lindsay tries to run onto this one. Couldn't quite get a handle away. Handle out the back was from Allman to a teammate now. Robbins under pressure. Good work by Hanley. 
Get to the McGannon. His right foot kick to the wing area. Garner will come up and meet this one. Head over the football. Looks to be Tudor. They've got some numbers, Mafra. O'Brien's one of those, but just scuffed up the footy again. And now Garnham will eventually get boot to ball. Kick it to some open space. McRae came to meet it. And then might have given away the free kick. The umpire missed it. The Eagles have got some numbers. Robbins with a little don't argue. Kicks it back 15 metres. And uh, Trent McRae's in a little bit of strife. And the Mafra players are concerned as well about him. He might be knocked out, I think you'll find. Uh, nothing untoward. There was certainly a... Uh, it wasn't a late incident as they've called for the trainers to come out. He's starting to move now, Trent. Hopefully he's okay. So we're going to have a little bit of a break in play here at the 19-minute mark of this second quarter. Scott will give me a chance to quickly go around the grounds thanks to Harvey Norman Furniture Gippsland in the Gippsland League. Want Thaggy 3 7 25. They trail the Tigers 5 3 33. Maui 6 6 42 to sale 1 5 11. So some uh, great games are uh, happening and uh, evolving in the Gippsland League at the moment, Scott. Absolutely. We've got an AFL score for us as well. It's half time still there, Scott. Okay. And, uh, uh, it's 9-9-63, the Pies, they lead Port Adelaide, 8-3-51, who didn't score for the last 12 minutes of that quarter. So, But, Paul, a bit of similarity from last week's game with Juan Thaggy and Leon Gatha, where we saw Leon Gatha didn't kick a goal in that second quarter. It's a little bit more of a, a bit of a Groundhog Day. Uh, very similar, you know, uh, Mafra are really bottling up the ball and really making a little bit of an ugly play, forcing uh, Leon Gatha to really chip the ball around. Yeah, you're right there, Box. The only goal, goal we've had for the whole quarter was Jack Ganane's snap from the um, bounce up there. Um, it's one goal four to Lee and Gather. Mafra have doubled their score from one point to two points this quarter. All right, so as we have a, a bit of a break in play... Might have an egg sandwich. Trent McRae... <laughs> <laughs> Trent McRae is down. They are attending to him out there. We have... Uh, Seen him uh, move around a, a little bit at ground level, but uh, they're going to take, obviously, all precautions with him. Uh, just, obviously, doing the, the checks of the, the neck and back area as well and, and making sure that Trent is OK. As we said, there was uh, didn't seem to be anything in toward. There was a, a contest that occurred. There was no sort of big hit. He, um, he sort of made a play on the ball, and the ball sort of come out of the... Uh, out of that, uh, Craig Renoy was over that time. The ball sort of pobbled out, and then play continued, and we noticed that he was, he was still down. So both the sides have come close to the boundary line. They're certainly not allowed off the field of play. The coaches aren't allowed on the on the field, but both uh, Leon Gatha and Mafra are having a little bit of a huddle now and having a bit of a chat. So it is the second quarter. As we said, it's a 21-and-a-half-minute mark of the second quarter. Uh, the score at the moment stands at Leon Gatha 5-6-36, uh, Mafra are uh, two behind and hopefully uh, what we might do if Kelsey is back in the studio we might get her to organise a bit of a, uh, an ad break that we might be able to go to in a moment just uh, while they're organising that. Uh, Timmy what do you uh, what do you make of this? Uh, obviously a player down uh, that got some con con concerns and I mean Lee and Gather have played the better footy clearly but it, they've only scored five goals, 6.36, and the two points to, to Mafra. Yeah, I think a couple of things as we see that uh, Trent McRae is back up onto his feet and slowly making his way now towards the boundary line, which is fantastic. But uh, um, applause go out to, obviously, our uh, all the trainers and everyone that volunteers their time for the clubs that do a great job to make sure that yep. uh, all these players uh, get on the uh, field and on the netball courts every week and, and take all the precautions to make sure that they're all, all OK. But it was a uh, smart play by the coaches to bring the players over into the uh, two bits of shade that are at the ground uh, while well, it is uh, obviously fairly warm out there today for them uh, in this so we look like we're going to get back underway uh, pretty shortly as McRae comes over the boundary line we won't have to go to we that we won't go to that, won't go to that I know break. she's frantically working uh, behind the scenes but we won't have to now as the umpires are about to get us back underway we think probably about a four or five minutes added on to this quarter so it's going to uh, take us into about the 30 minute mark um, as the umpires just waiting for everyone to uh, get back on we can see Trent walking near us uh, clearly won't take any further part of the game, but great to see that he is uh, walking uh, off uh, with a little bit of help from a couple of trainers, but it is uh, good to see that he's walking off for us. So the free kick is in the way there of Reed. I think he might have taken the mark back there. So Reed comes to the near side now. We've got the football back underway. Butcher takes a strong mark in front of his opponent in Garnham. Just holding things up does Danny Butcher. Right in front of the corporate boxes are absolutely chockers today. Goes short to Renoy, just the required 15. Looks up. There's not a great deal of movement forward for him. 
He's going to be risky and go inboard. Does he hit the target? No, unfortunately he doesn't. As Marriott picks that one off. And he's going to reload and go inside forward 50. Timmy? He's going to reload and everyone's going back the wrong way. Marriott, he just finds there. Hanley went to, went to the lead forward and then just darted back and, and Marriott was That's too not, good. And no, not Marriott, Marriott, isn't it? I don't not think Marriott. the kick was for Hanley. Uh, I think the kick was actually originally there Come for on, Ganane. Mate. It was there for Ganane. But he, Hanley's got enough pace. And, and Hanley handballs on. Marriott from 50. Got it back. Oh. And over the tried to oh, take the mark on the line was Garnham. He tried to take the mark of the year. What he should have done was just shepherd the thing through. Oh, he just but cost, it goes through for a minor he's score. He just cost Marriott uh, Zambrero. Yeah, <laughs> he, he, he did. <laughs> there might be chats about that after the game. Five seven thirty seven. Lean after leading Mafra two behind his two points. Almost twenty five minutes played. I wonder how Scotty's going with those chips. Uh, I think he's moved on actually. Anderson. Squares it out to Carr. Carr's picking out a lot of football, but it uh, certainly is deep inside his defensive 50. They got it out wide. Lands in the hands of Robbins. In front of the bar. Robbins went to go short. Wasn't on. Twist and turn. Nicely done. Got away from a brill tackle. Kicks towards the wing area. Lindsay in the front spot. Couldn't complete the mark. Archer Watt burst out of the stoppage. Kicks towards half forward. Nicely done. And that's taken by Max Gravener. A famous Mafra name as Max drives it inside forward 50 to Bedge. Good. Big spoil by Ben Felsen. O'Brien at ground level. McGannon's got him with company. Puts on the tackle with O'Brien. And the umpire said no prior opportunity. And we'll ball it up. Inside Mafra's forward 50, though. I, I mightn't have been listening at pregame, but Noah Fixter, is he gone back to power or...? Uh, no, injured, I would injured. think. Yeah, calf. I don't think he played in the twos. As Forrester. Clears it out wide with a handball to McGannon. Now to Turton. And the Parrots build again. Half uh, forward. They get it thrown into the wing area from half back. Ball in dispute though. Eagles have got some numbers. Working hard at ground level on that occasion was Sam Tudor. Little kick went along the ground. Eventually goes over for a boundary throw in. 26 minutes gone. As we said, this will probably go over 30. We've had a slight delay. Do you think the win for Mafra now is to just to get that goal? Just to break even for the quarter? Absolutely. Uh, just to say they can go in at half time to say, right, we've matched it with them and we've kept them to a goal as well. 100%. As we they... Go inside forward 50 again, Mafra. Bedgegood looks to go forward there, but he, he wasn't first to it, but it's come out. Oh, oh he's done the, he's nearly done the splits as he's gone round. He slips it over the shoulder. Is the ball going to bounce the right way? No, it's going to bounce through for a minor score. And it's a 34-point margin in leading athletes' favour there, 5 seven, thirty-seven on the Murray Racing Club scoreboard. <laughs> Mafra now three behind three points. Scotty, for carpet country at ground level. Just on that injury, Scud, the uh, video doesn't tell any lies, so just keep an ear out for the leading Gather boys offering some advice to one of the Mafra players. OK, Ooh. interesting there. Scotty with the uh, breaking news. So we'll uh, wait and see on that one. Turton's got it at the halfback flank. He goes out wide to Little John. On the far side, slow build up, but we've seen Langatha do this and then they've all of a sudden come through and were able to split uh, split the Eagles apart. Argento, he was at the at the fall of that ball coming through there and picking it up, able to get his hands on it there. Wrapped up in tackles here by the Parrots. They've got two, three at the tackle and the umpire will come in and ball it up. We probably need a bit more enthusiasm when we're calling out Nick Argento. <laughs> I think it's really important that you really okay. add a little bit of slur into that bottom end of that name. Are we going to southern Italy or northern? Southern. Southern. All right. Butcher from the stoppage. Quickly wrapped up by Forrester. Anything with an O south. So Lachino. Okay. All that sort of stuff. So Argento. Yeah. What we're looking for there. How's Nick giving us some <laughs> <laughs> pronunciation <laughs> lessons? <laughs> Just trying to help. Just trying to do me a bit. Here's Argento. Oh, <laughs> Forrester kicks around the body. Top of the square that it goes. Ball in dispute. Ganane's there. Will handle off. Gives it to Ben. Oh, no. Van der Plyte sprayed it. And from 15 metres out, it was Turton, in fact. And he loves a goal, too. It's a minor score. Now up to five goals, 8.38 leading Gather, leading Mafra three behind three points. Shame that Turton couldn't put that through. You could have had a call for life from the grand final a, a couple of years ago, Scott. Yes, absolutely. Is it Turton? It's Turton. So we've got, again, the umpires called it back. I'm not sure what's going on with that one. We, we need to have a chat to him at halftime and just let him know. But well, umpire what? advisor for the league, Peter Carey, is actually here today, he? Scott. So All we right. might just go and ask a question. We might send Scotty out there to ask that question. Absolutely. And a nice uh, mark again by Cade Maskell. Certainly the key to this game is the halfback for Lee Gatha, although that kick is turned over. And Butcher takes the mark, just wants to slow things down. 28 and a half minutes gone. Second quarter for Mowie Racing Club. 35 points is a margin. As Boxer said, Lee Gatha's only kicked the one. If Maffrey can get one late, they're going to match him. 
and just even the quarter as quickly they get it to the near side of the ground to Maff a little chip kick over the top to try and find Reed. And he got shoved in the back. The Mafra supporters want the free kick. Last seven scores in this match have been behinds. Five to Lee and got the two to Mafra. There we go. Has sort of turned for the worse. As we've got a boundary throw in. Willis and Scott will go at it again. Scott tries to get front position. Big Benny over the top. Oh, Marriott oh, comes oh, through. Man. How good does that look? Marriott from 50. If he can hit the target, he can't there though. But running onto it and able to get his hands to it. Hilberg. One to Argento, Argento, Argento! See? That is yeah, a Zambero goal of the day for Argento! See how it brings a lot of enthusiasm into what he just did then too. And but right on half time. Are you kidding me? What a reward for effort that was too for Nick Argento. What a quarter he's played. What a game he's played. 30 minutes had ticked over and it finished with an absolute highlight. The Zambrero goal of the day contender to Nick Argento. And that leaves us with a score. Lean Gath at halftime, 6-8-44. Mafra are three behinds. It is a 41-point margin going into the break. And, of course, we've got a halftime wrap coming up very shortly. It is all thanks to our halftime wrap, all thanks to Gippsland Mowers. We're going to cut it up. We're going to dissect what happened in the first half. All thanks to Gippsland Mowers. You are listening to Gippsland Live on Terra FM, and it's thanks to Harvey Norman, Electrical Gippsland.
Uh, welcome back. Half time's been and gone. And all we do is win, 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 of course. Uh, and it is Lean Gatha 6844, leading Mafra three behinds at half time. Scotty has been down at uh, the both clubs during the break, and he's also walked into the umpire's room as well. Scotty, for Carpet Country, what did you find out for us? Yeah, you guys were quizzing the uh, number of kick-ins that were called back, so I went down to chat to the umpires, and what it is is the players can be in the protected zone 15 metres around the square as long as they're making an effort to leave the space. So if your team's kicking in, so Lee and Gaffer kicking in from full back, any Lee and Gaffer player within 15 metres has to be making a concerted effort to get out of the space. And in this instance, apparently they weren't. So pretty simple question, pretty simple answer. Yeah, it makes sense. And that's what's been going on. All right. Did get across both rooms. A much happier Mafra rooms at half-time than at quarter time. I'm pretty content with their efforts in the second quarter. The Lee and Gather rooms, they've asked their players to keep taking the game on, keep working the ball across the half-back line. They'll obviously be down, down in rotation, though. We won't see um, Trent McRae. McRae back on the park for the rest of the day. Thank you very much, Scotty. All thanks to Carpet Country, helping dreams become a reality since 1981. That clears things up. It does a little bit. Scotty. Yeah, it was. It's about time he's actually done something he's supposed to do. Timmy, that's a bit of a question. <laughs> that's a bit of a question, uh, isn't it? Is what's the intent of getting out of that area? That's probably how, the... How does the umpire actually say, oh, yeah, he intended to get out? Yeah, or he mean? wasn't. Like or he was. oh, no, it's the same as if it's around the ground where they've got to make an effort to get out of the protected area. So even if they're in the protected area, as long as they make a 45-degree run out of it, the, the issue is is that if you're the opposition player, you can't be in that protected yeah. area. Yeah, just pay the so, 50. So you've got to... So that's yeah. why they're saying well, you can't have... If you can't have a teammate just hanging around there because yeah. it's a it's an advantage that oh, you should be able to have. Now that we've brought it to their attention, we won't have any in the second half. What no, this? Not one. <laughs> we All can right. only hope. I want to see uh, Mafra really shut down that half back line of Lee and Gatha this half, especially early in this first this first part of this third quarter. Really nullify, nullify um, Maskell and Alba's game influence. Well, let's have a look at it. Scott and Willis will be the Ruckman again to get the third quarter. Good tap by Scott. Down to Butcher. Goes to half forward. And Lindsay tries to work hard at ground level. Got wrapped up immediately. And we'll have a ball up. Car started on half forward. Normally starts in the middle of the ground. Carr has had 13 touches, but we want to see him around the middle and driving him inside forward 50. For me, he's had a lot of touches in the back half of those He, he gains a lot of yardage, doesn't he, Scott? He's yeah. a beautiful kick of the footy. Have him in the middle of the ground, get the ball inside 50, and really to put a little bit of pressure on the Parrots' back line. Well, just Speak, speaking of him. <laughs> I was going to say, speaking of him, he was at the bottom of the pack there, and he cut uh, one for his, uh, for his efforts getting down there. As Willis gets the handball out, Marriott tried to get the quick hands, wasn't able to get anything flowing through that. Renoy, he got tackled and taken to the ground. Coming back out here through Ross. Gives the handball up, but ends up with Turton. He gets the handball off to Hume. Back to Turton. Wasn't able to get it with one bounce, two. There's Felsberg. Quick hands. Great work. Ends up with Danny Butcher. He goes out wide on his right foot. A one-on-one -on -one contest, and there comes Maskell coming through with the fist to get it over the boundary line. I tell you, young Scott, the ruckman for Mafra, what future has this guy got? Mm. You know, it's just incredible. The only thing that's probably his little doubt, he tries to man manhandle <laughs> Big Benny, <laughs> Big John Stud, Willis. Oh, don't worry. The kids are, are not uh, forward in coming no backward. Way. They're not backward in coming not forward, forward. <laughs> whichever way you look at it. <laughs> doesn't matter. He's, uh, they've all got confidence, but Lee and Gather on this occasion oh. go forward. Great rundown tackle from behind. And the umpire hasn't paid it. Are you kidding? And now Lee and Gather go inside forward 50. If they get a goal out of this, they are robbed, Mafra. Gravener goes to ground, and they are. Ganane's going to swoop on it and kick the goal. I'm going to erase it from Lee and Gather's scorecard. They what shouldn't have got that, that one. What was that umpire? As Box is yelling out of the window. Are you uh, kidding? Two minutes into the third quarter. They've got to pay that one. Wow. Jack Ganane becomes the first multiple goal kicker of the match. His second goal takes Lee and Gather to seven goals, 8.50 on the McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard. A 47-point lead over Maffer. Copybook. Three goals, a three behind three points. Copybook rundown. Yeah. Perfect tackle. And you can see the umpire in the end go like he got a handball away. The problem was is he'd taken five steps, got tackled <laughs> down. He was on the ground and then he got rid of the handball. Yeah. It's called holding the ball yeah. every day of the week. Just that reward for effort <laughs> does deflate the confidence oh, of the players as well. It's just uh, one of those things. Got it. 
Just keep an eye on Jack Vanderplight, guys. He uh, put a bit of GST on a tackle in the uh, midfield earlier, and he's got up a little second hand. All right, thanks for that. Ball comes back to the middle. Willis with a big tap forward. Trying to run onto there with Marriott. Left it behind. The ball bounces in all different weird, wonderful ways. The best thing about this game, you're never out of the contest. As Hanley says, I'll go pick it up. Handle over the top to Vanderplight. Coming the other way was Felsberg. Wins it. Nice little handle out to Kaloran. I like the kid as he kicks it to half forward. Open space now. The run just eludes Gravener. And then it eludes back the other way. Cooper Elva. Elga. Uh-oh. Gravener got a chance to go the other way. He now has to put a tackle on. That was from Stables. And Cooper Elga. After Boxer caught him... <laughs> LG last week. <laughs> Agla. <laughs> Agla. <laughs> From the stoppage, Ross tries to work hard, gives the handball back to Cloran, slipped over, still got a handball away. Turton left it behind. Van, uh, that was Cade Renoy, gave a quick one to Felsberg. Inside forward 50, Bedgood taps it on. Can they get it to O'Brien? No, they can't. As the ball still pobbles around, big Ooh. tackle on Nash from Bedgood, didn't have the footy. Lean Gather win the free kick and the advantage. Hume over the top to Argento, back to Hume. Hume coming straight through the middle, gets the, the handball to Hanley. He keeps his arms clear, wrapped up in a tackle by Renoy, and that one's paid holding the ball, <laughs> even though he got the handball off. That but was anyway. probably more a handball <laughs> out. <laughs> Absolutely. Renoy, he got the kick forward over the top of the head, wasn't able to take the mark there, and it'll come out through Brown. He goes one effort, two efforts, back, on the, back onto it, and into it was Elga. He got the handball out to the far side and coming through and taking the marker. He's dropped, he's dropped what he should have taken there. Was, uh, was Hilberg. Comes back through and Maskell. He'll relieve, take a relieving kick and he does. And he comes to come out to the far side here. And the mark there is taken by Lindsay. Lindsay will look to reload and he does. Coming out here, Garnham on the lead. And it's nicely taken on the chest. He swings round onto his right foot. Chips up over the top. Looking for Van Plight. Wasn't able to take the mark. Here's Renoy going at it. Scott, he's done well. Steps out over the top. Quick little kick down low. It was just a bit of a scrubbing kick. Unable to pick it up there. But getting through some hands there was Gravener. He get the handball out to Butcher. Trying to kick back into the middle. It's a two-on-one contest. They're putting each other under pressure. What? But what's going to come out with the free kick? Advantage being paid. O'Brien delivers inside forward. 50 coming out. That was exactly the same thing as a push in the back, but wasn't able to be paid to Brown. He goes back for a second effort, dives on the ball. No one's able to get it out there. Carr stayed down low. He played for the free kick. Nothing. Umpire calls play on. And Maskell here in the back. And that'll we'll be, for, things. That'll be and for descent. 50 yep. metres, and I reckon that'll go against Carr. Yep. Yeah, I think he... Um, oh, double, I reckon. This might be 100. And you know what? He's probably got every, he had probably every right to dispute the decision. I don't think he's... Aftermath yep. um, description it, of it later <laughs> on uh, may have been the way he should have gone. It, it was a, certainly a double. We've got a shot on goal, Tim. And uh, Maskell, who's, uh, who's had a, a field day in the back line, as he normally does, because no one wants to man him up, he's going to come down and have, his, uh, have a set shot for goal from about 40 metres out pretty much directly. And we've got to remember, back, back a few years back, he was a, a deadly half-forward goal-kicking mm, yeah. machine. So yeah, right, he's not going to be too frightened in front of the sticks. Absolutely, he's not. Just about six minutes gone here in this third quarter. Maskell, after the 100-metre 100 uh, 100 metre penalty, he's gone from the uh, deep defensive 50. He's going to come in. He's taking forever to get started. Here he is. He's about to cross the 50. Going to kick from about 45, directly in front, on that left boot. Goes forward. Goal umpire does not move, and he puts it straight through the middle. That's the thing we spoke about at halftime. I think what Lee and Gather do need to get better at is that killer punch and I'm only in round three I get that but when you're in that position where you can put sides away and you're sort of still fumbling through it this is where they'll really step up the ante now Mafra's just starting to show a little bit of frustrations and a little bit of tired legs as well uh, they need to get on top of this and, and still get back-to-back -back goals here. And the margin crosses the 50-point mark. They are 53 points ahead, Lee and Gather, at the seven-minute mark of the third quarter. McDonald's gets land scoreboard. Lee and Gather, 8-8, 56. Mapra, three behinds, three points. Oh, big moments. All thanks to the Moore Bowling Club. Better Beer is on the sixth tap at the moment. And it's a big moment for the Mapra Eagles. They just need this first one, otherwise it gets pretty ugly. In the, look, we, we say the margin's 53 points, and they've been OK, but... All of a sudden, if they get a couple, uh, it gets to a part where we can't be saying that it's an OK sort of effort. Kaloran came out of the middle. The ball was touched, but it ended up with coming through the hand. There is Watt, and he's run down from behind, and that one's called holding the ball. 
And this is where they'll break you back now. They'll yep. put these tackles on. They'll score on the rebound, and uh, they'll just keep deflating the confidence. Another man who's been everywhere all day is Hume. He gets the kick out and goes out to that far side, coming down on centre wing, but it's gone straight into the hands there of uh, Lambourne. Lambourne goes, he stays out there and goes out wide. Maffred just chipping the ball around, but he's chipped it up too high. Coming out over the back there was Ben Spelzen, and uh, he'll have a boundary throw in. Far side here at the Mafra Showgrounds. We've ticked over eight minutes here into the third quarter. Timmy, not very good reading for me anyway, but uh, nearly three quarter. It is actually three quarter time in the AFL. 14 15 99. Port Adelaide 10 4 64. Good lead to the Pies. Van der Plight wins it from the stoppage. Goes to Garnham. He dropped the mark that he should have taken. Allows Reed to come in. Square it out wide to Allman. Had two goes at it. The forward handball's going to be okay. O'Brien gets on the end of this one. Nearly got ran down. Got his ball to the boot though. What just got uh, that was stable to go. That's all right. <laughs> they they best make mistakes. Towards Reed. <laughs> he goes back to the other direction looking for a teammate in DeMarco. Did I get that around the wrong way, boys? Uh, the ball, right. to the ball to the boot might have been. Well, the ball still has to get to the boot. Yeah, well. Yeah, and the boot goes to the ball. <laughs> Either way, it's same result. Boundary throw in. I've never said a word. Scott, I. I didn't even hear it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Boundary throw in. I'll get back on track. Nine minutes in. Out the back. Nicely done to Anderson. Tries to get into open space. Out there is Robbins. Goes to ground. Gives it back to the run of Anderson who came on. Gives it to Butcher. The one-two. Anderson's picked up four touches in the space of 40 metres. The kick goes inside 50 only just. Bedgegood tries to work Alga out from underneath it. Then he goes and wins the footy. Head over it. Umpire said no opportunity. And we'll ball it up on the far side of the ground. Scud, you were saying before that we've been saying that Mafra's sort of been in the game. The issue is, is we're not over nine minutes here into the third quarter and we still haven't been able to kick a goal. Yeah. So whilst they've sort of still been in the game, they haven't been able to put any real scoreboard pressure on at all. Yep. And it's, the, it's this real strength of Liam Gather's half-back line and the back six that has been the key. Around the ground and everywhere else, it's sort of been OK, but that last little bit, OK, when I say OK, it is still 53 points. But... Certainly they need a couple of extra targets up forward and at least some marks inside 50. Paul Carter, what do we add marks inside 50 for uh, for Mafra and for Lee and Gather for the, for the uh, game? Uh, four to Mafra, six to Lee and Gather. Yeah, we haven't had too uh, many. And that no. was going to be a comment of mine as well. They miss a butcher, a big target down forward as yep. well. So, you know, they've got that big target to look into. They might actually rise, uh, get them a bit more confidence. Willis again took the, the ruck contest out, was able to take control of the ball, kick it forward. It's out onto the far wing. Hemble coming out over the top. No real clear possession as Butcher just throws it on the boot. Oh, and Maskell in is. front, <laughs> as he's done all day. In front of Stables, he takes a strong contested mark. Comes back in forward looking for his mate in Marriott. He has one, two grabs, and he's paid the mark. And they're off. Marriott to Alga, running straight through the middle. He's taken one bounce, looking for and able to find Ganae. No, goes over his head. He turns. Can't bend down and pick it up. Hanley's coming through, but able to pick it up there. And, and handball was Tudor. Robbins got the handball out. Came... Kicked out wide here, and Renoy. Renoy, he's got one, two, three to beat. Does a great job with the handball, but it kind of came up to Elgar. He dropped something he should have taken. Butcher wrapped up him, and we're going to have a ball up here with the umpires coming straight in. Ball it up right in front of our commentary box here. We've ticked over 11 minutes into the third and quarter. Those four marks inside 50 for Mafra have, have realised one behind, two out in the full, and one that didn't make the distance. Yeah, exactly right. So they need a couple of marks around that uh, funnel area. From about 25, 30 metres out, box up. Yep, I'm going to keep uh, uh, singing the praises of this big Scott. Uh, he's going to get over the top again here. We'll get another tap. No, he didn't. Yeah, Willis, Willis it Marriott, did, got around one, got around two. Forrester on the left boot. He puts it to 50. Touch ball was called. Up for the mark. No one was able to take there. Handball coming out from Borschman. Forrester again. Swings around one, swings around two. No one's able to take clear possessions. There he is. He's been great for them today. He's been calorant. He's wrapped up in a strong tackle by Borschman. We'll have another ball up. About 55 metres out from the Parrots' goal. Going up and doing the ruck. Here we go, the two young fellas. Scott did well, got rid of it. Marriott tried to get it on the boot, couldn't. Anderson got a handball out. Felsberg, he takes a sweeping handball out and ends up there in the hands there of Ross. He gets it back off the hands there from Allman. Chip kick over the top, Felsberg. He sat and waited for it. And coming through there to get his hands in was Turton. Wraps up the tackle here with Alga. And that was Allman. And we're on true centre wing on the far side here. 
12 minutes gone here in the third quarter, and it's the Parrots by 53 points. So if there's one thing I want to do today before we go home is squash this fly that's in the <laughs> It's oh, drawn big bananas. <laughs> so here is one. There is just, oh, just one. one. Turton goes backwards to Alga. And they again come in board. This one at the toes there nicely of McGannon. He picked it up, drives to half forward. And Garnham takes a strong mark. He wanted to play on from Reed. Umpire said he didn't go just yet. That was a good call by the umpire too, because it did look like Garnham wanted to go. So Reed had every you know every right to actually stop the tackle, stop the run. Drives it inside forward 50. Talon Brill will go up and mark at his chest. Turn around. He thinks he might be a little bit too far out to score. And Brill will go over the back. Does it get to McGannon? Oh, it didn't quite. He tried to kick it off the ground. Lambourne pushed him and the ball over for a minor score. And the McDonald's skip saying scoreboard. The Big Mac is the original mouthful, but it's one kind of flavour now. It comes in three sizes, the Mac Junior and the Grand Big Mac. 8, 9, 57, Lingatha, three behind, three points, Mafra. Carr, he kicked it in to, Carr kicked it into Hilberg, should have got a free kick, didn't. Ganane on the left hand. Gannon tries to snap it around the corner, nothing there. And the ball's going to roll through for a minor score. 55 point margin, 8, 10, 58, Lingatha on the McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard, three behind, three points, Mafra, almost 14 minutes played through. Just wonder, boys, whether it might be worth Mafra rolling Joel Lambourne forward to try and uh, break up that lack of goals on the scoreboard. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, he does have a, a bit of a target. He'll present and lead. And it's just at the moment, they've got all young gun, young players down there. So they do might want a little bit of experience. They get it. They're oh. bed good on a long lead. The problem is he's at half back for the Eagles. Looks up. He's got Reed on. Finds him. Reed will have Kaloran if he wants him. Goes in that direction. Just sort of sat on their head a little bit. Kaloran has to fight hard at ground level against two parrots. And a good tackle on Hume. Not rewarded, though, from the umpire. And now we'll have a stoppage. You're right, Scud, too, because it's that second and third line behind Bedgegood. Once he's marked, they've got that, they haven't got that option to go further down the field. So, again, he's gone 20 metres forward and it's crowded a stoppage already. Big tap out there was from Brown. In the running, the open space of Marriott tapped it, then got tackled, tried to look for the free kick. Close to the boundary line. Over it goes. Scott, we've got a thriller down in one thaggy building up here. It's one thaggy, 5-7-37. Maul have a three-point lead, 6-4-40. Back here. The margin is at 55 points. Lean Gather's way. Mafra still looking for their first goal of the game. Borschman handles forward. Marriott just on the run and forward running and delivers to Brill. Can't mark. Second effort was good. Got ripped around the head. Free kick. 50, 49 metres out. He's too far out to score. He'll be looking for options. Mafra's got some numbers back now. Timmy's got in on the uh, swatting fly game. I'll kill it, I tell you. Not going <laughs> to find it. Let's be nice to our uh, flying friend. <laughs> Talon Brill's going back to look like he's going to have a shot on goal. He didn't, make, he didn't want to make the distance from 45. Now he's got to kick at 55. This will be surprising if it goes through. Far side of the ground, kicking, and he goes short. They waited for the lead. You knew it every day of the week. Jack Ganane just waited and waited, and then he presented when the hole opened up. You knew that Talon Brill was going to pass it off. Absolutely, and uh, when he didn't do that uh, only a few minutes ago, Tudor looks like he's done himself a... An injury in that contest as well, and it might be the afternoon done for him because he knew straight away and he's running off the ground. So hopefully all's well there, but he knows his body better than anybody else shoots. Jack Ganane's got two. He'll kick it 40 metres out. Won't be an issue now with the distance. Accuracy, he's on a 45-degree angle. He walks in, deliberate approach. Right foot on its way. He wanted to come back, and it does, yes, only just. And he snuck it home. For Ganane's third of the afternoon. This is what they're really good at, Scud, and that's sharing that ball inside 50 to their best option as well. So Brill knew exactly what he wanted to do, and, I, and I'm sure his teammates did too, and Ganane's lead was good, strong and hard. What I like to see out of these forwards is when they put their arms out and not use their chest and, and do the right fundamentals to mark inside 50. And now we're at a 61-point lead for Liam Gather at the 16-minute mark of the third quarter. McDonald's gives fans scoreboard. Liam Gather 9-10-64. Mafra three behinds, three points. Scud st staying with the Gippsland League as well. Murray's really come out to play this afternoon. They're 11 6 72. They lead sale 4 8 32. So back here. Mafra Showgrounds this afternoon. Great to have your company on TRFM. This is Gippsland Live. It's thanks to Harvey Norman Electrical. Two young guns go out. Big Scott gets the big thump out. Nearly goes to half forward. Unable to come through there was Gravener to pick it up. 
We've got a ball that's going to be wrapped up here in the centre square. One thing you've taken the lead now there in the third quarter. Uh, it's 43 to 40. Thanks come to Harvey Norman Furniture. Marriott, he was tagged but wasn't able to get anything there. Ross, he wasn't able to come through. Ball keeps being tapped around there. Van der Plyde, he's looking to try and get it out. No one can get anything clear out of here. The umpire's going to come in and we'll have a third ball up. Here's a stat. Paul Carter. Yes. How long has it been since Maffer has been held scoreless? Goalless, I should say. Goalless. I'll check that up for you. I know you will. Back. Scott over the top, does well, gets the tap out. Coming through and picking the ball up there was Watt. He came back and was looking for O'Brien. Couldn't find, couldn't get his hands on it though. And coming through was uh, was Lamborn. It's gone well, but Van der Ply cut it off there. Quick hands, Alga to Hume. Hume from 60 delivers, looking for Ganane. One-on-one -on -one contest, good body work. Ball comes to ground. Well done there by Anderson. Got the handball, but uh -oh. coming through and ending up with Ganane. He delivers the handball over to Brill. And it's another one for the Parrots. Yeah, great play then too. And again, they share the ball around. Great work there by Ganane. Probably my only critical thing on that, even though they got the goal, was Ganane's body work was perfect. He just uh, didn't hold that mark when he made beautiful position. But he was good enough to follow through, tap the ball on forward. Again, forward runners. Brill was there uh, and they finished off. Taking the lead out to 67 points for Lee and Gatter. 19 minute mark, third quarter. They are 10 10 70, leading Mafra three behind three points. And answered your question box, not in this league. So <laughs> not, not, it's before 1960. Wow. <laughs> Very impressive, Boxer. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's a nice question. Yeah. How, what's more oh, impressive is Paul, Paul Carter just being able to rattle that off within 35 seconds. No, it's, 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 it's common expected. knowledge that that happened. <laughs> it's, it's, expected. Expected. Oh, no, it's actually not still. knowledge that Boxer actually uh, <laughs> comes up with those good questions as Lee and Gather go forward again. Van der Plyte tries to get it to Hanley. Renoy had the spoil, but front and square there was Hilberg to kick around the body. Ganane might get one here. Lamborn did well. Gravener was there. Oh. Great work by Hanley. He was just in the play a couple of moments ago. He ran on, got to the next contest, and Ned Hanley gets another one. He's got two the afternoon, and welcome back to senior footy, Ned. And this is when the middle of the ground gets on top, and um, we're waiting for these floodgates to open, and that's three on end now. I'm pretty sure there for the Parrots, or four on end, five on end. Five in the quarter. Five in the quarter, but three on end in the last probably couple of minutes. But It's 11 on end, if we're being honest. <laughs> yeah, no, that, but, <laughs> yeah, but it's not a stop-start, stop-start like we've seen with no, what Maffer have been able to do. And uh, just through their midfield, through the bullocking and hard work of Marriott, is unreal. Yeah, three in three minutes, so... And it's 11 10, 76 on the McDonald's Gift Fan scoreboard. Lane Gatha, three behind three points, Mafra. Johnson will, from Mafra will go up against big Benny Willis. And Willis gets the tap down there. Both players slipped over afterwards, though. Coming through Turton, he's tapped it in front. He's kept it in front of him. Going to run in through it and try and get it there was Hilberg. O'Brien, he got the kick out. He's coming wide. Alban will lead the chase against Borschman. Uh, Ganade, sorry. Wrapped up in the tackle there, coming through. Orman, he's going to throw himself back at it, and he does. Hanley puts his head over the ball, does well, spins out of it, wrapped up in the tackle by Carr. Handball comes out. Van der Plyde, he's wrapped up straight away. And the umpire's going to come in and ball it up. Hilberg's coming off, guys. Looks like a left shoulder or a left arm injury um, at the moment, so we'll have to keep an eye on that one for us. Scotty, while you're down there. Also got one on uh, also on Mafra too. We'll get to that in a moment, but... Uh they try to win this clearance out. They get it out to Renoy. He'll have to kick a high one around his body. He doesn't go a great deal of distance. Little John with a spoil. Robbins at ground level tries to sit on it and then hold it in. Might be in a little bit of trouble. The umpire says no. And we haven't seen Luke Dyer for a little while as well. No stats this quarter at all. No, and I don't think he's, uh, he's been out there at all either. So, again, Van der Plyte from that stoppage barrels it to a dangerous spot. Brill! Comes out. There could have been a free kick. They're looking for a free kick down there as well to Garnham. But in the end, it doesn't matter. Brill's taken the mark. I mean, the free kick was there to Garnham yeah. too. But with the, the mark was great from Brill. But I think he plants a seed for the umpire. Because there's been a fair bit of holding uh, down forward, especially with Garnham. As Brill lines up 30 metres out directly in front. He's got two this afternoon. He wants to join Ganane on three. And he likes it off the boot. He claps before it even goes through. And Talon Brill's got three goals this afternoon. He was in good form last week. He's pretty nervous coming up uh, last week to speak to us after the game. He was our best on ground performer for Izuzu. He was really good. And he, what he spoke a lot, a lot about was the team things. And so you can see how team-orientated this whole side is. But it's right through it. And he was speaking it last week. 
And again, he put himself in a great position, a good contested mark inside 50. Margins now 79 points at the 22 minute mark of the third quarter. Lee and Gethar on the McDonald's Gippsland score order 12 10 82. Mafra still on the half time score, three behinds, three points. Is Scotty awake down there? Hey, Scotty is there. I am indeed, Boxer. You haven't put me to sleep yet. Hilberg's got the uh, ice on the shoulder, so I don't think we'll see him again for the rest of the day, especially given the scoreboard. No, exactly right. And uh, we Luke Dyer as well. Have you noticed him in the uh, sidelines for the uh, Mafra side, Scotty? I don't think he's had been on this quarter. I'll go up the other end and have a look and I'll grab some chips while I'm there. Good work, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> as, uh, thanks to Carpet Country this afternoon. Scotty's great down at ground level for us. As a big Benny Willis unopposed in the ruck in the end. Tapped it out to Van der Plyte, Starting to get into this game. This guy's been good too. Argento. He gives a handball back to Willis. Sold some candy, the big fella. Woo. And then delivered a barrel inside forward 50. It's a foot race. Tapping it forward there is McGannon. Keeping his feet though was Ross. Had the handball to open space. Fellsberg was there to support him. He got a handball out further afield to Robbins. Inboard kick was just okay to Anderson. And at half-back flank for the Eagles. Goes short to Renoy. They want to hold on to it a little bit to the Eagles. Goes backwards to Reed. He's got some numbers on the switch here. Allman's one of those. Should use him. Goes to him now. He completes the mark. What's he got upfield? The answer, as it's been all afternoon, not much. So now it's slow. At half-back for the Eagles... Kick down the line. It's a shallow kick and be picked off by Little John for, Maf uh, for the Eagles. They, uh, Parrots, that is, they go inboard to Vanderplight. And now they open it up to the far side. Argento, one of our best on ground performers this afternoon, will square it out wide. They've got runners everywhere. Nash is the one that's ran on from the halfback. He drives it to Brill, puts one hand out, takes it. 49 metres, lowers the eyes, gets through to Hanley, squeezes the handball to Hume, and Hume hits the post. It's a minor score on the McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard. They've got three sizes now. The Mac Junior, the Grand Mac, and the original Big Mac. Oh, we can play the final siren now. The margin's 80 points, like I said. 12-11, uh, 83, Lane Gather to um, Mafra, three behind three points. McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard. It's not about you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's come in. He's called to play on. Comes back into the middle looking for Claw and wasn't able to find him. Coming through there was Nash. Got the handball through into Forrester on the left boot. Go over the top. Lands in the hands of Brill. He's going to run into an open goal and kick his fourth. Well, there you go. Yeah, they've really... That killer punch we're looking for, here it is. And uh, they're starting to look a little bit tired now. It's probably the, the young minds are getting fatigued as well. But um, this is where Lee and Gatha are really shining because they know when to take hold. Um, and I'm sure that the quarter time, three-quarter time huddle from the defensive side of it is we're going to keep these guys goalless. That's our goal uh, for the rest of the afternoon. So it's seven goals this quarter to Lee and Gatha, taking him on the McDonald's gift Lane scoreboard to 13-11-89, leading Mafra three behinds, three points. Scotty for Carpet Country. Yeah, Dyer done for the day, mate. He's iced up and Lamborn's just come off cramping in both calves. So I'm not going to go back up the Mafra bench and they might put me on the field. <laughs> <laughs> Ball back to the middle. As Willis again gets this tap down to Marriott. This is a training drill now. Hambles out the back to Little John. Now to Forrester. Left foot kick to half forward downfield. Scott, don't think he meant it. Little John's going to go to the big ruckman. Marriott's going to go to him as well. Ah, uh, come on, boys. They need to uh, separate. Bedgood's going to come in and help the uh, youngster as Garnham goes inside 50. Brill will mark on his chest. What a burst here by Brill. Yep. Absolute huge. Talon Brill has kicked three in the quarter in six minutes. Oh, Maskell's at him as well. Six Come minutes. on, lads. Let it go. Look at the scoreboard and have a look at everything else around you. So, Talon Brill, the free kick was there. That was about it. They can stop this little business going on now. Talon Brill's lining up for his fifth goal. We've got a good angle on this one from 45 metres out. Right foot kick. Oh. What a kick of the football. It is through the middle of the ground. Goal square. And the umpire did not move on that occasion. And Brill's got a handful. Just want to remind the uh, Lee and Gatha players that um, Daniel Bedgood uh, stepped into the uh, ring only probably a month ago. Maybe they were watching. Maybe, but I tell you what, I still wouldn't want to uh, no. face him one-on-one. -on -one, but, you know, it was one of those things. There you go. Um, Forrester went up to young Scott, you know, shook his hand, and they uh, have made it um, up for the afternoon. However... Brill, what a burst these last five minutes. Well done. The Nate goal quarter to Lee and Gather taking them to 14 11 95, the 27 minute mark on the McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard. Uh, uh, Mafra still three behind. Scott wins the tap out down towards Carr. Right foot kick to half forward. 
It's going to bounce into open space. Brown's back there first for the Parrots. Taps it to himself. And now Bedgegood has to come in and win it and get shoved over the boundary line for a boundary throw in. 27 and a half minutes gone in this third quarter. Absolutely. And Brill's kicked the last three for the Parrots to give him uh, his five, as you said, Scud. As the ball will come back in. 55 metres out from the Eagles' goal. They'll be looking for something before three-quarter time. Scott did well, got it over the back. No one was able to take it clean. Apart from the Parrots there in Turton, he delivered the ball forward. Brill, there, that man again. He's wrapped up by Reed. He's not letting him go this time. And we'll have a ball up. Back in the centre square. Right in the middle as we tick over. About to tick over 28 minutes here in the third quarter. Willis and Scott will go at it again. Scott got the tap down there. <laughs> Forrester just threw the boot in. Wrapped up into a tackle and in the back is going to be a free kick and it's going to go to Carr. Looks for the handball and does. Finds Renoy. Renoy delivers the ball inside looking for Bedgegood. Going to get over the top. It does. He isn't able to grab it, but he's able to pick it up as a second effort. Great work. Kaloran, he's able to bring the ball inside straight through the hands. Ends up with Alga and the Parrots are out again through Marriott. They've got the absolutely Hanley. They're just running everywhere. The Parrots delivers straight forward. And into the hands there of McGannon. McGannon looks to go forward. Marriott's barking instructions as to where he needs to go. He goes out wide. Gee. And Hume, geez, he's been good all day too. Quietly just going about his business. Handball over the top. Argento! Gets the handball through. Turton, he's left it behind, but he's good enough. To, he's got enough time to go back and pick oh. it up. And then he raffles it off as to who he kicks it to. Forrester from 55 out on the lead. Looking for Garnham's over his head. Orman and Garman going at it. Orman, he's just going to tap it along, and he's quite happy to see the boundary line. The, the kick was good by Forrester. I think he just the timing of Garnham was just a little bit off because uh, he ended up uh, running past the ball. Some but of their field kicking in incredible. general play is very good from the Parrot. Uh, everyone just turn off social media in the next 10 minutes because the Magpie Army is going to be up and about. 14, 18, 102 to 11, 8, 74, 10 minutes to go in the last quarter. Ganane did well, got the, ham, got the ruck contest. Turton, he's, that's holding the ball all day, umpire, and he eventually paid it. And Butch has put his hand up and said, thank you. He handballed it, though. He's, <laughs> he did after five minutes. <laughs> Butcher will take the relieving kick from the back line. He's looking for someone. He calls them there. Coming up forward and coming through. Maskell took the arms play on, said the umpire. Ben Spelzen, he's wrapped up straight away. And we'll have a ball up here right outside our commentary box. As Harry Stables is a bit slow to get up there with his uh, right, right shoulder. So Willis and Scott. Scott's battled hard. Willis win this one, though, to Marriott. Nice oh. over the hand, shoulder, over the shoulder handball to Forrester. Delivers to Brill. My goodness, Talon Brill. He's kicked the last three goals. He's got five for the game. This is some quarter from Talon Brill. Uh, and this is, again, where he's prepared to lead into the right spot. And Forrester, again, with that use, his left foot is deadly. Uh, he's got good pace. Took it on the chest. He had plenty of time. He had plenty of space between him and his defender. Great kicking board. This would be five in 11 minutes if he gets it. This is a purple patch. I don't think I've seen a period of play that a player has just turned it on as much as Talon Brill. Well, you weren't watching back in the day. <laughs> He's kick five. Talon Brill puts oh. it through. No. Oh. Hits the post. And it's a minor score. A little blemish. For the Parrots. 14, 12, 96 to three behind three points. McDonald's gives fans scoreboard. 31 minute mark of this third quarter. Carr takes the mark from the kick in. They'll be praying for three quarter time pretty quickly here, the Eagles. He finds Butcher. Just need to get some control. He's handball back to Carr. Carr just chisels it down the middle looking for someone to pick it up. Big Scott does well. He gets the handball over there. Finds out with Anderson. He gets it back to Scott. Through to O'Brien. His handball over the top. Felsberg. And there's that three-quarter time siren. And we thought the Parrots had been uh, so-so uh, uh, here today, but that third quarter truly showed exactly how good of a team they are. And they will uh, go into the three-quarter time break very, very happy. 15-12, 102 to Mafra, three behind. It's three-quarter time, and it's all thanks to Harvey Norman, Electrical Gippsland.
of the uh, players we're following. Jet Kalorans had uh, 21 hit out, uh, 21 disposals to three quarter time. Alex Carr 17, 16 to Cade Renoy from Lee and Gather. Tom Marriott 10 disposals that quarter. He's up to 24. Cade Maskell 23. Jake Vanderplight 21. Cooper Elgar 17. Thanks very much, Paul. They are all thanks to the new Isuzu D Max Live Your Own Way available at Gippsland Isuzu Ute LMCT 10285. They're on the Princess Highway in Terrelgan. Scotty is down at ground level. What did you find out from the two huddles at three-quarter time, Scotty? Yeah, tale of uh, two cities again here. Mafra, happy with the effort, but they're down a few soldiers. They're going to have to rotate really heavily just to keep 18 on the park in the last quarter. Lee and Gatha, foot on the throat. They will not go away uh, without putting 120 points in the in the margin category here. They are all over them, and they just really, really want to make a, a big statement today. Yeah, they certainly do. They've certainly started off the season a little bit sluggish, but today it's been all one-way traffic for the Parrots uh, boxer around the grounds. Check, get everyone up to speed with what's happening thanks to Harvey Norman. Furniture before this final quarter gets underway. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Three-quarter time scores, 6 7 43, one thaggy, Maul, 6 4 40. But I can say, looking at the live stream, Maul's now got a 10-point lead, 43 to 53. Uh, and they've been playing six minutes there in the last quarter. Murray, 39.87 to sail, 5.10.40. In the mid-gippy, MDU, 4.15.39 to Tarwin, 7.4.46. Newborough, 5.8.38 to Yanar, 10.9.69. Thorpedale, 9761. They just start to shrug away from they're trying to shrug Ballara away. 8856. Tura, 111278. Comfortable leaders over Hill End, 6541. Stony Creek, 3826. To more or less, 111177. I haven't got a score from Rosedale TTU, so if I've got any friends at uh, Rosedale, which I probably don't, um, <laughs> can you send me through a score, please, one of you beautiful people down there at Rosedale? Uh, Woodside, 7951. Sale City, 8452. So they've come back from a fair deficit there, so it's a one-point lead to Sale City. Glengarry, 8 3 51. Hayfield, 18 10, 118. And Cow, 8 4 52 to Yulon North, 12 11 83. Just before you get to the next ones, uh, Scotty down at ground level. Yeah, just a quick update on Trent McRae. He showered up and he's in his civvies just watching the last half here, so not, not great, but obviously it could have been a lot worse given the circumstances, so he's here watching the last half. Thanks very much for that, Scotty. Anything else for your boxer before we let you go and get this final quarter underway? No, I was just looking for that killer blow from Lee and Gatherin. We saw it, uh, albeit through uh, a very dominant midfield and a very dominant forward in Talon Brill. So, yep, uh, looking forward to seeing what happens and how it eventuates in this last quarter. Absolutely. We spoke about big moments of the game and uh, just sort of hanging around a little bit. But as you said, uh, all thanks to the Moore Bowling Club. The Lee and Gatha side certainly put the foot down in the third quarter. Of course, don't forget the sixth tap, the mysterious sixth tap. It's called Better Beer at the moment. Zero carbs, zero sugar, and it's a $5 pot, $7 schooner. Final quarter underway, and it's all thanks to Harvey Norman. Scott got the tap down there. It ends up with Marriott, who got the handball out and came out to turn. And he's delivered forward, and Hilberg, he's going to bend down, pick it up. He's wrapped up in a tackle straight away. And the umpire is Vantage. going to say he's dropped the ball there. An advantage. And Anderson's come running away with it, delivering the ball inside 50. Going to end up in the hands there. Here we go. Of what? What delivers the ball forward and looking for the first one of the day. There we go. Your beauty. There you Archer go. Watt comes through. Great play by Anderson. And the sirens are going mad here at the Mafra Joe grounds as the Eagles put their first one on for the board into the last quarter. It's a great build-up then by Mafra through their transition off halfback. Great tackle. Uh, laid there by the half-back line, but uh, it was that movement forward. First time I've seen good control from a Mafra forward uh, inside 50 to allow him to score, and now we can avoid that wretched record uh, not being broken today. Exactly, bright box. Harvey Norman computer scoreboard, Mafra 139, then got the 14 12 96. That score came up at the 27 second mark of the final quarter. I knew That's I should have gone for a hey piddle diddle <laughs> at three quarter time. It's going to be a long glass corner. <laughs> he's, still, he's still in the little steps. We're in trouble here. We are in big trouble. As the ball comes back in the middle, two ruckmen go at it again. Big Willis got the tap down there. Coming, King it out there was Butcher. Able to get his hands on it there with Van der Plight. Handball through. Marriott got the handball done well to Brown. Brown on the left boot looking out there for Garnham. He picks it up. Went left then went right. Handball's through. Comes back in to uh, Orshman. He gets the kick inside. Ganane takes a strong contested mark. Just look for the give off here too. He's a little bit probably out of his range. Who's so let's watch for the setup. Brill's the one. Oh, Marriott all on his own. Brill's the one. Marriott. <laughs> Marriott in between four Mafra players. 
the umpire's called it back because he may not have he may not have been around on his line. Time on, uh, maybe. time on. But even still, just play at bay advantage. They still haven't they still haven't gone straight through Marriott. <laughs> yeah. They've still left him alone by himself. If they dump it straight inside, as the uh, he's back himself in. He is going to come. He's going to just kick. Just inside 50. It's not going to get to the distance. It's going to go up. Brill's in the front spot. Brill, he wasn't able to take a contested mark there. As the Eagles are going to try and clear it out through here. Ball's gone up high. Marriott's underneath it. Hume comes over the top. What? But a strong contested mark there by Watt in front. What? 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 <laughs> he delivers the ball back. Butcher. What? <laughs> He's going to go out to the far side. And taking the mark there is Anderson. Looking to go over the top. No, it's 50 metres, 50 metre kick, so it's Johnson. 50 must have... Uh, <laughs> yeah. The young fellow on the far side wanted to kick, but it's a 50 metre penalty. 50 metre penalty. Here's he's a, he's a boxer prediction for you, Scud and team. Oh, here we go. Brill, seven. He'll finish with seven. All right. He's on five, so you're really sticking your neck out. <laughs> well, for a small forward, that's a big contribution, though, Scud. Yeah, but he's already got five on the board. Doesn't matter. <laughs> 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 it's not like you said it. I'm not going to say he's going to kick on 10. <laughs> I look like an idiot again. <laughs> I reckon. <laughs> I'm going to kick 10. I'll be a hero. i got a prediction too. You're going to piss your pants. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, the ball's I'm not sweating because it's hot in here. I'll give you the tip. <laughs> <laughs> the, ball, the, ball, the ball's made its way to the oh. half forward line for the Eagles, and we've got a, uh, we have a ball up 55 metres out on the far, far side here at the Mafra Showgrounds. Willis and Scott does well. Scott over the top. Butcher kicks the ball inside and go. going to be a land inside. What? What is there again? And he's going to take the mark and he's going to look to go back and kick his second for the day. What? <laughs> well, we're going there, are we? No, we oh, won't, oh. no. I reckon this carpet's waterproof. <laughs> <laughs> Boxer for carpet country, please. What? If you do, we know where to get it fixed. Carpet country. <laughs> the Watt's going to come in. He's about 45 degree angle. He's going to kick from about 40 metres out. Ball's on its way. Umpire moves fairly hard to the left, and it's through for a minor score. Chipping away at the deficit, one point at a time. One four ten to Mafra. It's an eighty-six point uh, deficit uh, over Lee and Gather on the Harvey Norman Computer Scoreboard. The Parrots are fourteen twelve ninety six. She's all over that. The MCG. It's the Pie seventeen twenty one one twenty three to Port Adelaide twelve nine eighty one. So Maskell, straight down the middle of the Mafra showgrounds, right in the middle of the ground where big Betty Willis can stand and take the mark and play on to Van Der Plyte. He drives it to half forward, open space is Forrester, can't complete the mark, get through a butcher tackle, no. He got his handball away, it goes to the top of the 50. Ross will work hard for the Eagles. Head over it there was Forrester again. Somehow the ball bobbles out where Carr has it and he got dumped in a Borschman tackle. And the umpire said no prior, and Just we'll look, ball it up. You love the stuff that Leon Gaffer did. That was double tackle too. So we're playing, playing three quarters and five minutes into this last quarter, and they're still going at it. So top of the 50 it is. This time Hilberg tapped it down. The free kick will go to the Ruckman. Or is it going to a, a midfielder just off that contest? Someone who got held. It was the Ruckman in the end. Good to see he's back on the ground, Scud. Uh, went off with a shoulder injury and uh, Scotty had him dead and done. Hilberg for unloads from 51 metres and thumped through. No, oh. the umpire's going to wait and stop. They go to the video review, which is virtually a discussion here at Country Footy. The two umpires will come in. The goal umpire, the field umpire, he wants the football. They can't ask the boundary because umpire. Because they're going to have the a chat. The box. He he's been, this umpire's been watching too much AFL. And he just says, what do we think? We go to the review. There's three umpires around this. Four. Four now. Suspension builds. Where's Scotty? Send Scotty down there. Scotty, can you tell us what it is? Yeah, they'll be given a point because they always go for the lowest score. It's the obvious thing. And Box, just start thinking about waterfalls for me, can you? What is even a goal? How hard is it? <laughs> Make a decision. It's the not that hard. The are still discussing oh, this. Come on. And hey! Hey! We have a touch. <laughs> it's called theatrics. It is. It's a behind. And the margin's at 87 points and Carr drives it down the middle of the ground. It's going to come back. Forrester puts it back in. Hot spot. Brill back with a flight. Can't get there. Carr will relieve the pressure again and get it out to a teammate. And, and that teammate, Stables. Stables got the handball looking for Felsberg. Didn't quite make it. But coming through there was Kalor and he's done well all day. Been great. Hilberg got the handball looking forward into the forward 50 line. Argento didn't have it, but the umpire said play on. 
Scott, he got the handball through through the hands. No one's able to pick it up. So the big fella goes, I'll just go and get it myself again. He's Delivers well. the ball forward. Maskell. And there's that man, Maskell, again. I'm not sure if the umpires know, but they're not paid an hourly rate. They're paid a set rate. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter how long they're out on the ground. And here it is, McGannon. He delivers the, the ball forward, going through handful. Forrester, he's going to cross the 50. Put it on the left boot. Delivers. And this one is going to bounce. Bounce. Oh. Bounce oh, and not go through. No, nothing. Not go through. Nothing on that. And we're able to take it away. And Anderson will take the relieving mark here deep inside his forward 50. Finds Felsberg, who again, this young Mafra team, they're going to build a side around him. He's been great. On the left boot, the pink boots comes forward. And there's Watt with a strong contested mark. He's been good too, I reckon. What? He has. He has been very good. And he stepped up really big in this last quarter. He goes out wide and he finds Robbins in front of his... He's been their dominant forward. (laughs) (laughs) He's kicked one. Robbins has gone 30 metres backwards here as they try to chill the clock here and goes finds Anderson. Anderson comes back through and finds Carr deep in his defensive 50. He goes out wide and that ends up in the hands there of Johnson. So they've taken seven possessions and they have not made any inroads into the Lee and Gatha Parrots direction. Reed, he's gone left, then gone right, now come back out to the left again to Carr. Carr will come to Anderson and I reckon Anderson may get Butcher who's just come off the bench. If he's quick enough, he'll get him. If, if he's he... not, he won't and he eventually finds Butcher out on true centre wing. Butcher swings round, looking to go inboard and he does, into the centre of the ground. Go forward. Finds Robbins. Robbins has got to go. go he's forward. got to go. He's now called to play on. No, we're going back. He, <laughs> he now goes backwards. That one's to Johnson. Johnson to Carr. He goes forward. We eventually cross over the halfway line and finds the big fella in, in Scott. Now he's just going to just settle things down a little bit. Not sure why. For Renoy to run around and then take a chip kick out there oh. and taking the di- diving mark out there is... I reckon they've gained five <laughs> metres out of that play. Yep. Kicks, Kicks over, over the top. Absolutely. And he finds O'Brien with the helmet on there out on out at that big gum tree out there on the far side. Big landmark here. Bedge good. Strong contested mark out in front. If they can get a mark inside 50, this has been good. Oh, and oh, it just can, couldn't get anyone. Scott, you just got to yeah. be quiet and just let them, get, <laughs> let's let them build it up. They had it all there until you just put the old commentator's yeah. curse on. But they've got the ball wrapped up inside their forward 50, 45 metres out. Bedgewood comes in to do the ruck work against Young Brown. No one's able to get it clear, and the umpire's going to come in and have the, another ball up. So 45 metres out, the margin sits well. It's 87 points, as we said, it's all done. And nine minutes gone. Can Maffrey get another one? They got their first goal. Are they actually leading the quarter? They are. They are. Yeah. They are winning the quarter. Reduced by six points. That'll do. If they can have a win, that will be enough for this young group. A quick kick out there from Brown. Goes straight for the boundary line from the stoppage. And the umpire says, no, it's not. Ball it in. Far side of the ground. It's a tricky rule, this one, because AFL obviously pay it quite frequently. And it's just to keep the game moving. But that was quite obviously... Not yeah. going to anybody. I think the umpires might be more deliberate than insufficient intent locally. But anyway, I agree with you, Boxer. Yeah. That was directly to the boundary line. Scott taps it down. Vanderplay with a head over it. Good little work by Allman. Can't get a handball away, and he got pinged for holding the footy. There's Razor Ray Chamberlain in is the commentary empty? box. Can I use that? No, you can't use the bottle. It's yeah, a water yeah. bottle. It's a water bottle. And they kick down the line. Finds McGannon. On the wing for the Parrots. Chips over the top. He's got his teammate in Turton on the far side of the ground. It was Forrester in the end. Goes to half forward. They get it to Hume by hand. Hume's raking right foot kick out the back, Brill. And Brill can take the mark. He's been quiet this quarter for 11 minutes. Hasn't done nothing. That's why I said seven. He's kicked five. Boxer stuck his neck out in the line five minutes ago. He said he was going to kick seven. He's going to line up for goal number six. He had one of the all-time best quarters that you've seen from a Gippsland League player where he kicked four goals, three of them in the space of six minutes. Talonbrill for goal number six, puts it through the middle, yes sirree. And that is a good afternoon for Talonbrill. We spoke to him last week as our player of the day. We won't do it this week, but he has been very good. 
Lert takes Lee and Gather back to the 93 point margin from three quarter time. Harvey Norman Computers scoreboard at the 12 minute mark of the final quarter. Lee and Gather 15 13, 103, leading Mafra 1 4 10. Depending on what happens uh, down at 130 with Cooper McGinn, this could put him third on the goal kicking. Uh, so far, and he gets another one, we'll go to second. So, I um, oh, know you'll still say third. <laughs> Se- seven's, less seven's, than, seven's less than eight. eight. But he, he, may, he may have kicked a couple more. You've only gone down to five. He Correct. Have I, had I think he did kick two last week, yeah. to be honest. So if he kicks that, oh. we'll put him nine. He could go to the top, mate. Oh, thanks, Tim. No dramas at all. Just trying to help you out. The two young fellas in the ruck will go at it. Here as we ticked over 12 minutes into the last quarter. Brown and Scott... And Scott got over the top of it. Marriott was held, wasn't it? What, there, what came through? He's picked it up straight away, but he's wrapped up in a tackle by three of the Parrots. And we'll have another ball up. Big moment for them all. Bowling club, better beer. Zero carbs, zero sugar. $7 schooner, $10 pints. Give that one to Brown. Trying to come out of it. Marriott did well. Got the handball out. Little John just threw it on the boot. The ball's going to come out wide, and it's going to bounce over the top of everyone except for Ganane. Did well. Tried to get racked up in the tackle, but it couldn't. Argento went right and then came back in on his left. Ooh. Gives it to Hanley, put him under a little bit of pressure. Ganane comes crashing through. Butcher with a strong tackle. We'll have another ball up. Gee, he's gutsy young Hanley, isn't he? he? Like, we know what he's been through over the last uh, 12 months or so. And he put his body right on the line then too. So great work there by the young fella. Time to start thinking of our Izuzu player of the day. I reckon Argento's been very good, just quietly. Oh, you've already cancelled out Brill. Poor, poor I thought he went all right. If he kicks seven, he's got to be half a chance, doesn't he? He's only kicked six. Yeah, <laughs> Marriott delivers the ball forward. Hilbert couldn't take the mark there. Coming through, hands over the shoulder. No contest there from the umpire. And we'll have another ball up. Just the game down there at one thaggy, and it's still a it's a comfortable lead now. You would, you would nearly say a three goal lead uh, to the Tigers, 44 to 62. Scott over the top, got the hat tip out there again, but came oh, down okay. to Marriott. Ganane with the tap over the cross. For, Forrester kicked the ball forward, but standing in front and taking the strong contested mark there was right. He finds Carr. He's going to go out wide, out to the far side, looking for and finding out there in Robbins. Robbins plays on quickly. He's got one over the top there in uh, O'Brien. If he can get him, and he does. Needs more to go to it. Bedgegood's on the lead. It's going to be a strong contested mark. He had one, two goes at it. Couldn't quite take it on the third there. Felsberg comes out of it there. Wrapped up straight away in a tackle there by Cooper Elga. And he'll have a ball up. He leads up so well, Bedgie, and uh, he does it all day. Umpire was a little bit rough on him, not we're all in that mark. I reckon he had enough of it to pay the mark. 14 and a half minutes gone in the final quarter. Scott with the tap down here. It's a 93-point margin. We'll try and make the game as entertaining as possible in the final minutes here. Marriott from the stoppage kicks towards the boundary line. We'll find it and go over for a boundary throw-in. Not much love from Rosedale. Can't get a score out of there at the moment. Haven't got any friends left out at Rosedale? No, no, I've got a couple. No, um, surprised. Didn't, uh, of course, the Gippsland Live team with a, uh, a big call tomorrow afternoon. Sunday afternoon football is going to be a belter down in the west. Warrigal are uh, hosting Druin. That's going to be a, a great game. It always is. Arch rivals in the competition is very high. And none, well, there's a couple bigger. Um, but they're certainly up there with rivals Druin and Warrigal. It doesn't matter where they've been over the last no. couple of years either. They're always a good tight contest, and yep. both teams have started well, both getting some wins on the board early in the season. So it'll be a, uh, a cracking game down there at Warrigal tomorrow. Uh, I'm looking forward to calling the game with Scotty Crabtree tomorrow. So <laughs> uh, me and Big Scotty are doing the venture down in the Izuzu tomorrow. What's that, Scotty? Just make sure you bring a couple of water bottles, Box. <laughs> He's water I, I bottles. don't think Timmy's going to take his home this afternoon. <laughs> Robbins from the stoppage here tries to get to O'Brien. He just tried to spoil it over the boundary line, but by that stage it was out of bounds on the full. That could nearly be 50, but anyway, we're late in the game. Inboard kick to Hume. He's been good. He has been very good. Land, Izuzu. Oh, yes. Is he a contender? Hume has a, a rolling bounce across half-back. Squares it out wide to Little John. The back six have been very good for Excellent. Lee and Gath. I mean, they've restricted them to 10 points for the game. Here's McGannon at ground level. Handball's in board to that man, Hume. A sweeping handball over the top to Nash. He quickly gives it to Lindsay. Lindsay in board to Hanley. Hanley in a little bit of traffic. Goes backwards by hand to Hume, to Nash. In the middle of the ground, Forrester all on his own. He's been good too. And Forrester, so is this man. Maskell, left foot, driving kick, open space. Look at that. Hilberg marks 49 metres. 
He's going over the top. Did Brill. he go to him? Brill. Brill. No. Oh. Elga picks it up. Gives it to Brill. And Brill will get one over the shoulder. No. Now will he, he does. get the second one over the shoulder? <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> Talon Brill's got six. Boxer. For the greatest claim in the history of predicting sports. Said he'd get seven goals. When he already had five, he's going to have a shot for seven. Talon Brill. Well, it was a pretty gutsy call because Liam Gatter do like to share the ball, Scott. So they may have overlooked. They're leading by Talon. 93. <laughs> They've kicked 15 goals. Brill had five of them. He got the sixth. And now he's missed, he's missed his seventh opportunity. It's a minor score. And Boxer can sit down. Oh, no, no. he can't. 94-point <laughs> yeah. lead to Leon Gatha. Too much Harvey Norman computer scoreboard. 17.5 played in the final quarter. 15-14 to one goal four. When the river runs dry. Car gets a pull back. you got rubber mats in the back of the car. <laughs> yeah, he's on To Kaloran. He's still, in his, he's still in his defensive 50. Looking for someone to lead up to him. He puts there and finds it on Johnson. But coming across and cutting that one off. There was Borschman. And we'll have a boundary throw in him. Front of the Mafra coaches box. Just a reminder to uh, everyone out there, winners today in the AFL, it was the Magpies by 42 points over Port Adelaide. Were they five goals down? They were. <laughs> Boxer wrote them off. <laughs> <laughs> How good is this? How good is this? <laughs> <laughs> then he started it. Hanley did well. Forrester, he's trying to keep it in front of him, but he couldn't. Cars over the ball. He's wrapped up by Forrester. And we'll have a ball up. 18 minutes gone here in the last quarter. It's a 94-point lead to the, uh, to the Parrots. To the Eagles. They've kicked one goal for the day. As big Benny Willis taps it down, try to get Vanderplot on the run. Carr has been working around the stoppage, couldn't clear it out. Sitting on the ground, Vanderplot got a handball. The umpire said no. We'll call this one back. And Scud, thanks to Harvey Norman Furniture, Gippsland, Moey, 40 point leaders over sale in the last quarter. Top of the 50. Ball up back here. Over the back tap, beautifully done. To Marriott, to Forrester, to open space. Brill! 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 He's got it on his chest. Yeah, boxer, boxer. They have <laughs> good teams. When they know someone's on a hot streak, Keep they find them. Yep. Right? So you're not sure that your call where you thought, oh, they share it around. Mate, he kicked five. They, they well, why wouldn't you here. give it to the player who was in best position? He runs into the fat side. Great lead, great kick. These left footers of Lee and Gaffer, they are so spoilt to have players like Forrester, Cade Maskill, Alga. Uh, in a side. Marriott. Marriott. He's not left foot, though. Talon Brill left foot, okay. has got six. Boxer. Nostradamus picked seven. Boom. And oh. Brill puts it through <laughs> the middle. Does that mean I get to sit in the front? If you want Tats Lotto numbers, ask Boxer. He's on a roll. As Talon Brill gets his seventh. Well predicted, Box. Well, your first number has to be seven in the Tats Lotto numbers. So, no, it was great work. And two, the way they uh, left the open space down forward to let Prill run onto it again. But it's that half-back line that we just keep uh, ranting and raving about. What are you laughing at? Well, his name's Brill, not Prill. <laughs> well, oh, Prill's one of those tablets you have when you need to it's get a toilet. It's a 100-point lead on the scoreboard, the Harvey Norman computer scoreboard, that is, at the 20-minute mark of the final quarter. Leading out 16-14, 110. Mapra 1-4-10. Sorry about that. The fly was on your hip. <laughs> <laughs> Still I need help down the stairs. You just broke my hip. <laughs> so Scott and Willis, back to the middle we go again. Not long to go in this one. Thank goodness, I guess. As Borschman handles forward to Marriott. Under pressure, gets it to Forrester. Runs into a tackle. Gets out of it. Gives it to Argento. Argento goes to guess who? Brill. Correct. Brill. He's gonna Correct. Kick, he's going to kick 10. He's going to kick. <laughs> he's going to kick 10. <laughs> you mean to step into this quarter box, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got to have a shot, son. Tell him, Brill. He thinks he's too far out. This is right on his range. He's outside. Or the the marks on 40. Eight, eight metres. Brill will have to kick at 52 metres. I'm not sure he's got it in him. At the 21 minute mark of the final quarter, from 51 in the end, thumps it on its way. It's just not going to have it. Has the distance, not the accuracy. It's a minor score. And the margin now sits at 101 on your Harvey Norman computer scoreboard. Get special deals on Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5 plans with your premium Optus dealer. Hurry, it ends April 17. Ball comes back in, looking for and finding in Robbins. Gets the hand. Ball oh, looked Ooh, like what? what? Down to Carr's feet. He wasn't able to pick the ball up. Going at it once with Garnham. He gives a handball. <laughs> it was a hot potato to Hanley. He's wrapped up straight away. 
We'll have the ball up. So pretty close down at uh, 130. You've just pegged one back. It's a 12-point lead. Oh, actually, it's full time now. So the siren has gone. 130, 7, 8, 50 to Morewood, 9, 8, 62. So that's the Tigers' first win of 2024. So right under the Tigers. And 0 Garnham, and 3. Garnham got the, the tap out there. Nothing's able to come out of it except for the ball now ends up in the hands of Felsberg. Wrapped up straight away. Dumped in the tackle. And he's going to be paid for holding the ball there. I see Marriott's got that. It was in a dumping tackle. One umpire's paid holding the ball. The other one's come in and paid the sling tackle. Bedgegood comes in to remonstrate. Absolutely, he does. I had it as going as a sling tackle. And uh, they've made the right call in there in the end. And it'll be Kaloran that'll take the free kick from Afra. His kick over the top for Felsberg. Just a bit on his head, but he did well. Went back for the second effort. He's had it. Got the handball out. Did well. Handball over the top and ends up there with Johnson. Oh. He's from around there. Oh, nowhere. Handball. Forrester. He's done well on his left boot. Comes back inside. Was taken out there by Gravener. So Gravener will square it out wide. Right to a teammate in right. That's right. <laughs> Half back flank. What? Delirious. 23 minute mark. The margin sits at 101. You've got to expect this, I guess. As they come to the near side to Felsberg. He will certainly be one of Mafra's best, I would say. Maybe even the best, as Felsberg got it out to Butcher. Of course, our player rankings will be released during the week on our social media. Jump on Facebook and on Instagram, Gippsland Live, and you'll see all our player rankings from the, this both sides. The kick inboard went to a teammate there in John uh, Anderson. Now they get it further out wide towards Reed direction, who they've gone forward now. Half forward flank. He's got O'Brien over the top. In 250 senior uh, club games for the club, he deriv delivers a pass to Bedgood. Bounce off his chest. Ben Felsen just Ooh. barrels it <laughs> and kicks it as high as he can. <laughs> kick him a touch. He was kicking for a touch. <laughs> he did not look to who he wanted to kick to. He just kicked it as far as he could and as high as he could. And it landed in the hand of Reed. Having a shot at goal, wasn't he? That's something that you get from about under 10s, I reckon. As the kick goes towards Bedgood on this occasion, O'Brien at his toes, gathers it, right foot kick to the pocket, can find Renoy, no. Spoil over the back there on that occasion from Kyle Brown. And we've got a boundary throw in. 24 minutes gone, final quarter. Lee and Gather lead at 16-15, 111. Mafra at 1-4-10. We've got all the netball scores from around the Grant Courts as well that we'll get you up to speed with in our post game, our player of the day, our Zambrero goal of the day. And we'll have a chat to one of these Lee and Gather players in a moment. No one's able to get it clear. Campbell comes out though. Robbins, he's gone round there looking for it. Handball, handball. Kicks the ball inside 50. And that's going to go out of bounds on the full from Ross. And the Parrots will reload. Well, what a game we're going to have in the A grade netball tomorrow, Scud, when uh, Warwick will take on Drew and the two powerhouses of netball. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of VNL players that play in both sides. So if you're in the area, get down. We're going to have two great games of uh, sport tomorrow afternoon in the A grade and the senior game live from Warrigal tomorrow afternoon. Just got a couple of uh, scores for you, if you like. Lee and Gather have defeated Maffer in A grade netball here, 62 to 25. I can let you know Maul have had their first win, 43 to 34 uh, over the top of one Thaggy. And Moe, big, big winners. 73 goals to 21 over Sale. So Moe, huge winners. As you said, there's a big blockbuster game in the A-grade netball next uh, day tomorrow. And uh, Moore will be pretty, uh, have a bit of a sigh of relief too to win the A-grade. They were nearly 0-3 after playing the grand final last year. Willis just took it straight out of the uh, ruck contest. Marriott got the kick forward. Garnham got the tap back down. Ganane coming through. They've oh. got McGannon in the middle. If they can get to him, they can. He can run. And he can carry it all Brill. the way through. Brill. Brill. He's out in the Brill. open. Brill. Go he out. takes the mark. Oh, oh. He's going to... No. Oh, he, look at the team play. Handball's over the top. Siren, Siren gone. No uh, score. What's going what's to be the score here? No, he's paid the mark. Pay, bring it back and give him a shot on goal. No, no, no. The umpire, they're going to have another discussion. Has the siren sounded? Did the, siren, did the siren go? No, no one's moving. I thought I heard it. We no, thought we heard it. It might have been a car horn. It could have been, maybe. Could have been the car horn. It Hang was. on. Touch. Oh, and it's been touched. Oh, after all that. <laughs> after all that. What the? 16-16, <laughs> <laughs> 112. Lee oh. Gather, 102-point leaders. Over Mafra, 1-4-10. Harvey Norman Computer scoreboard. Not a true forward, Brill. Any any oh. true forward like you, Boxer, would have gone back and taken the kick. Not on your life would I have handled. <laughs> Reed, he comes out wide and finds Anderson. 
Anderson over the top to Felsberg. I would have said I lost you in the sun. If you <laughs> asked me after what he said. <laughs> the sun was behind him, but doesn't matter. <laughs> he comes out wide and finds Butcher. Plays on quickly. He's going to get tackled from behind. Nothing on. Comes back into the middle, and he finds Ross. Switch Ross it. has got to go. He's got O'Brien free if he can find him in the forward line. He can't. He goes in between him and Allman. And Wright, Wright eventually gets it there to O'Brien. Might be a little bit outside of his range. He might, he, might need, inside. he might need two kicks from here. He goes, handballs off. Wright puts it to the goal square. Who's there to take the mark? Tom Marriott will take the relieving mark for the Parrots. And hey, there's the siren. The siren. Yep, there it is. Wraps it up here. Uh, of course, we're going to quickly go through our post game after this. But Lee Gather, far too strong in the end. 16 16, 112. Defeating Mafra 1 for 10. And that is as uh, easy as it was for the Parrots. 102 point victory this afternoon. We're going to have a chat to some of the key players, or one of the key players, of course, our Gippsland Izuzu player of the day from Lee and Gatha. We'll get to that very shortly. You've been listening to Gippsland Live on TRFM. Right across Gippsland in the valley, 102 point victory to the Parrots. It is all thanks to Harvey Norman, Electrical Gippsland. <laughs>